of America with your host, Michael and Jacob. Big, big ups, y'all. <clears throat> big ups. Oh my goodness. What did we witness this morning at 5.30 a.m.? May not have been 5.30 a.m. for you. It was 5.30 a.m. for me. One of those games where you're like, why, why, why did I wake up for this? I wonder why. So shout out anyone who had it worse than me. But 5.30 in the morning kickoff is quite crazy. Waking up at 5 a.m., is ridiculous losing 4 nil at 5 30 in the morning well i guess you know you say six in the morning by then it was two nil about six in the morning it's, it's not great not great not great um i would say this if i had to put a word you know they do those what are those those oh you got one word one word to sum up what you've seen today there's a fucking hair in my mouth it's attached to my head. Um, they say one word to describe what you saw today. I would say concerning. I was concerned. And it's hard to be concerned so early in the morning unless it's something to do with my wife or children. But unfortunately, no baby. So I'm like, okay, I'll wake up. I'm not going to do a watch long. Don't need to be shouting and shouting and yelling while uh, my wife is sleeping. But good thing I didn't because I would have been yelling quite a bit. Uh, Chewy is here, as you can see. He's huffing and puffing. I don't know why he's doing that. Hopefully he doesn't piss everywhere uh, in the middle of the show. But if he did, that would be more than what Tottenham did this morning or earlier today for you or whatever day it may be for you. I hope you're doing well. Um, look, there's a lot to talk about. But one of the things I, I would say concerning is the word that I'm hearing or that I'm feeling a lot lately is concerned. I mean, I'm, things are concerning. And I would say the fans' response as well has, is quite concerning. How quick we are um, to just, quite frankly, abandon ship. I think sometimes in a process, you got to... I hate the word process. But I've said often that this is going to be painful. Growing is painful. Becoming larger, bigger, better than you are is a painful process. When you go through puberty as a human, it's a painful process. Your knees might hurt, your neck, your shoulders, your arms may hurt because you're, you're, you're growing. You're becoming who you are. I've often said Tottenham Hotspur is like the baby dinosaur. We're a T-Rex, baby, but a baby T-Rex, they ain't that dangerous. They can kill some things, but a baby T-Rex, they're not going to trample through the jungle and be the king of the land. They're just a mere little baby, just a baby. Ooh, just a little tiny baby. A little baby T-Rex. That's what we are. So we will be dangerous one day. We can be dangerous sometimes, depending who we're playing and how they decide to approach this baby dinosaur. Um, some people will look at the baby dinosaur and say, oh, this naive, non-adaptable baby dinosaur. How, how, how can we say that this will ever be a big, dangerous dinosaur? Well... We, we can't, because if you don't allow the baby dinosaur time to grow, how can the baby dinosaur become an adolescent dinosaur? And that's what I'm expecting to see next year. Next year is when I'm going to say, show me the adolescent dinosaur. Take care of some of that light work. You know what I mean? But right now, we are a baby. We are a seven-month-old baby dinosaur. And I believe us to be a T-Rex. But, hey, time will tell. But before I keep going on talking anymore about baby dinosaurs and such, let me say hello to everyone in the chat. Big up to the 50 people who are here within six minutes of going live. That is big. That is love. Um, even when there's not a lot to love today. So there you go. Here's some here's some hearts. Hope that, hope that makes you feel better. It's probably not going to make you feel better. But hey, um, also I thought 
you know, I could do the easy thing. And the easy thing would be, oh, well, hey, you know, my wife's pregnant. I'm not going to do a show because uh, Tottenham got their ass whooped. Got they ass whooped, son. I'm talking about everybody I big up got they ass whooped. That's what happened. All right. There ain't no other way around it. Let's not beat around the bush. But when we allocate blame and we say, oh, this person's at fault and this person's at fault, I think we really got to look at, look at where we are, how we approach this, and the end result, and where we're trying to go. Obviously, 4-0 away at St. James um, is not great, but it is not worse than a 6-1. It is not worse than breaking a record for the fastest time four goals are scored in a Premier League match, which I believe was 20-something minutes. We set that last year at St. James Park. So, um, But still, going in at half, 2-0 down, that's awful, unacceptable. To come out without a response, also unacceptable. I mean, when you look at a lot of the numbers, uh, which I haven't, we possess a lot of the ball. Now I'm looking at the numbers. 73%. But we only had 11 shots, two on target. They had five on target, 18 shots. So it is what it is. But let's say hello to the chat. Big up everyone who's here. Um, let's say hello. There is a poll. Obviously, the poll says, where are you with Ainge? 44 votes in the house right now. It says Ainge at fault for today, 36%. And 27% uh, says, Ainge in, I trust what he can do. 25% says, I don't blame Ainge for today. And 11% says, Ainge out. I've lost hope in him. Well, I'm sorry for those 11% that did lose hope in him. Um, my, there we are. Um, big up to OCC, first one in the house, first YouTube chat member. I think you got gifted a membership yesterday or something like that. So big up to yourself. Big up to you. Um, if you see anybody calling for Ainge out, says they're most likely an Arsenal fan trying to create division in the Tottenham community. I found a lot of them. He says, no, Ainge out is not trending. It, it, well, it may not be anymore. Let me check if it is. Let me pull up a new page on Twitter. Let's see if it is trending. No, but it was at the time that I made this video. So... Um, I'm going to rock with that because I also, I starred a lot of, or I, I bookmarked, you know, I keep my bookmarks. All right. I've got my bookmarks. What's that? Oh, then bookmarks. Yeah. That's what that was. Um, no Tottenham fan is sincerely angel out says Vern. Hey, you changed your thing to a snail and I'm not sure the symbolism, but big up to you. Let's see who else is in the house. We got tea bag, tea bag. How you doing? Says Ainge out. Well, there you go. <laughs> and he says, I'm delusional. Well, there you go. Uh, big up to Ryan Gloria. Says, what happened? An ass whooping. And that's what happened, friend. Daryl Denton says, Ainge in or Ainge out. Fans are allowed to question it, in my honest opinion. Absolutely. I've never said anything on the contrary. But um, for me, I can only speak my truth. I don't, I don't really blame Ainge for today. I don't blame Ainge for Timo Werner in six and a half minutes. Instead of controlling the ball and passing it to two people who were right there in front of him as well, or t pulling it in, taking it, the bro tried to volley. He thought he was Latani Ibrahimovic. Do I blame Ainge for that? No, <laughs> no. Maybe he gave him the confidence to make him feel like he was fucking Zlatan. But the fact that in six minutes and forty-five seconds into the match, we create a chance, and Timo Werner, great cross from Brendan Johnson, Bintancur won the ball great. Like, there were things that we still did good. And, I, and to me, the big picture here is that, yeah, it was shit, and we didn't capitalize on our moments, which has been the downfall and the story of us. But I'm not buying into this notion that it's, like, all somehow Ainge's fault that Mickey Vandeveen fell over twice for two of the goals. It's not Ainge Posicago's fault that Pedro Poro did a back pass straight to a guy wearing the opposite color shirt. I don't blame Ainge for those things, personally. Uh, but you are allowed to question it, like Daryl Denton says you are. Um, <laughs> at Spurs, the manager's a pawn anyhow. Could be true. I mean, he is the only one that ever seems to get the, the, the blame. Jose got the blame. Conte got the blame. I mean, Nuno, he got the blame. I'm just going to throw him in there because suits the narrative I'm saying. Yo-Yo, Jacob, and Chewy, no sign of the baby yet? No, not yet. No baby and no three points. That's a shitty Saturday. No baby and no three points. I've got my health. I've got my family still, so I'm still blessed. 
Um, uh, Monday or Wednesday is is the days that they're telling us it's 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 going to happen one way or another. So we'll find out. Ryan Gloria says it's okay. Spurs get another two week break. Your fifth consecutive break. <laughs> I don't think that's good. We had two weeks off before Fulham. We got our ass whooped. Now we got two weeks off before Arsenal. I hope it ain't we get our ass whooped again because I would love to be the spoiling party for Arsenal's little parade. I would love that. I mean, when you think about objectives that you have remaining for the season, one of them screwing over your arch rival, Nemesis, to me sounds like gravy. Big up George, big up Jay in the chat. Who knows who's the blame manager or the players? I blame the players. I'll be completely honest. I blame every single player. You name them, I'm blaming them. I don't care what their name is. They're getting blamed for today. That's that's how I feel about it. You can feel about it however you want. Yeah, I never said you're not allowed to feel however you want. You say, oh, angel this and tactics that, blah, 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 naive, not only done it that, blah, blah, blah. Again, I hear you. I've seen it. I've read it. I see you. I hear you. But to me, that is just, that is, again, you just have a constant headache and you're like, oh, let me just take, let me just take some acetaminophen. Oh, I'll just take some acetaminophen. Oh, it's okay. Acetaminophen. Well, eventually that's just going to catch up to you. To me, these players, man, these play, these club, these players. That was a really bad Italian accent, by the way. Uh, big up to Zaman, just coming in here to have some fun. Jazz Fusion, hello, how you doing? Novagen. Loving that you're a Yorkshireman now. Ainge out, Robbie Williams out. Big up Novagen. Um Yorkshire. That is the that is the accent. Big up Spurzakis. I am Spurzakis. Big up to Pinto. Hello, Pinto. That's a fantastic car, by the way. I'm a big fan of the Pinto car. If you don't know what a Pinto is, just Google, just Google the ride. Ainge in till the day he gets sacked. Well, ain't that the truth? Please like the stream. Big up AJ. Like the stream. Do what AJ says. Do as AJ says. Come on now. Do I hear a Destiny Udogi? <laughs> uh, he got cooked, bro. He got absolutely manhandled by Anthony Gordon. I was making fun of Anthony Gordon yesterday. His name's Anthony Gordon, right? That fucking guy. I called him Danny Trejo, and he cooked us. He cooked Destiny, a guy who I've said is the biggest, the best left back in the league. He got put on beans and toast like they like in the UK. Some of them beans and toast. Even here in Mexico, we got beans and toast as well. A little bit different style, um, especially breakfast beans. But you know what? Destiny got... He got turned around like he was at prom doing the little turn around every now and then. And he got pushed to the ground. It was not a good sight. Speaking of pushed to the ground, Van Deveen falling all over the place. I mean, my last watch along, all I was seeing was Van Deveen, Mickey Van Deveen. That's all I kept singing. <laughs> Were we singing that today is my question. Hmm? Van Deveen. Big up Felipe. Hold that, Jacob. You absolute fraud. Felipe. I do have to hold that today. I cannot lie. Since Amelia, how you doing? 4.30 here. 4.30 in the morning for you. That's a crazy time to kick it off. Regista Kev only shows his face when things are not great. But he also, you know, he has one cherry out of six cherries. So he can hold that as well. Hayden Cooper, mate, when you live in Australia, you're looking at earlier starts than that. Big up, Hayden. What time was the kickoff for y'all out there in Australia? What time was the kickoff for you? Jazz Fusion says reality reality is that a song i don't know cursor like secured big up jacob it was always going to be a tough game for you guys expected a draw to be honest but damn <laughs> that's funny that's actually really funny cursor so big up to you smash the likes big up tommy g ainge might as well got out the rocking chair get served cuban cigar by butler on sterling silver trade today his job earn his money on off the field that means communicating with the team during the game um there's a lot to say here tommy g and i'm wondering if i should do it now but fuck it i'll do it now we've gone over this on this show before ange has spoken about it because people have brought up the fact that he is, has a rather muted um stance on the pitch but i mean if i look for it i'm sure i could find the fucking the quote but I don't have, let me see if I can find it. You, you're going to make me want to find it. Because he did speak on this already. And it's kind of exactly the things that I said in regards to why he is the way he is on the sideline. 
the touchline, whatever you want to fucking call it. Where is it? Where is it now? La -di -da. I can't find it. Mickey Van Der Ven. Oh, there's some good bookmarks in here when times were fun. When the times were fun. Not so fun. Uh uh uh. Not so fun today. Not so fun today. Do, do, do. I can't find it. I'm still going here. I'll share this tab so y'all can see, so it don't just look like I'm ignoring y'all. I'm going through all my bookmarks here throughout the time. When was it? I can't remember when it was that he spoke on his rather mute. I think I said something about him. rather muted on the sideline. He said, y'all need to realize I'm the GOAT. Mm-mm-mm. There it is. I found it. April 1st. I Just for you, Tommy G, I went back to April 1st to find this for you. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's expressions. Don't want to show that yet. Um, look at this. Look at here. All right. I'll take your comment down. But Tommy G, this is for you, buddy. Oh, wrong window. Let me zoom in here. Ainge Postacoglu on his more muted touchline celebrations. This was two weeks ago. says, if I want the players to be clear-headed in that moment, it won't help if I'm jumping around and screaming my head off. That is not me anyway. It doesn't mean I don't internally feel the anxiety and all those kinds of things, but I've learned that over the course of my career and in those moments, I still may be needed in those moments. On Saturday, we scored, made a substitute straight away, and put Pierre on. If I'm running down the touchline just thinking we've scored and won, I'm not helping the team, but that doesn't mean internally that I'm not running so there you go i could go on and read the rest but there you go tommy that makes you feel a little bit better about it all big up david calvino just keep things in perspective you are blessed big up david calvino i'm very blessed way too blessed to be this stressed but damn i'll tell you what tottenham are trying their hardest man they are trying their hardest but big up david big up aj 17 likes there's over 70 people here are we only on 17 likes? Surely, but don't call me Shirley. We can get we can get that number up. Um dinosaurs are extinct. David Calvino, that doesn't that that doesn't change my thoughts. We are the baby dinosaur. We are a baby dinosaur. And you want a little tiny T-Rex with just a little baby, a seven-month-old little tiny T-Rex baby. And you want him to fucking take down a big ox. You want him to take down a fucking cow. That ain't gonna happen without a little bit of help. And we are going to grow. We are going to be the big dangerous T-Rex where everyone fears us. They know how we're going to play, but they can't stop us. That is what we're trying to do here. Not be malleable to what we are not water. <laughs> Ainge never came out and said, you know what? Let's be like Bruce Lee. Be like water. Adapt to whatever fucking cup that you were put in. No, fuck that. Fuck that. We are who we are, mate. That's what Ainge said. So for me, consistency and philosophy is more important in your first, I've said this a hundred times, but in your first year, consistency and philosophy is more important than adaptability to circumstances. Hello, Richard Coberman says, we've got to stick with it. I worry that Ainge is not going to adapt. Although the recruitment is better and we are watchable. We've gone from one extreme with Conte Mourinho to Ainge. No happy medium. That's part of it. That is part of it. But big up to Richard Coberman. That's a new name in the chat. I don't think I've seen you here before. Big up. How you doing? Um, Felipe says, you're a fraud. Your manager is a fraud. Your club is a fraud. 4-0. Hold that. Without injuries, we would have finished above you this season. Will you hold that, Felipe? You're the one crying about injuries. You're the fraud. You won't call me the fraud. You're a fraud if you're complaining about injuries. We all had injuries, bro. We be in, We could say, oh, if we never had injuries derail our whole season, we could be challenging for the league. We could all say that. You know, if motherfucker, I open my wallet and all of a sudden there's $10,000 in there. Oh, look at that. Boom. That's just me saying shit, right? That's just us saying, without this, oh, without my wallet, I wouldn't have had $10,000. Bro, I never had $10,000. What you talking about? You talking about something that you ain't have. These points that you think you lost out on because of your injuries. It's the same excuse when Tottenham fans try to tell me, oh, we're this and that because of the injuries. I didn't buy that either. I ain't taking that because the club should be deep enough. Our squad should be deep enough to be able to with 
withhold and 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 take those blows to the first 11 and you have decent or adequate and maybe even potentially first teamers on the bench who can supplement when you have players suspended injured or out for tournaments etc and we've all gone through the same fucking pains felipe so i ain't having this without injuries we would have finished above you this season bro anyone could say oh without injuries this would have happened bro but that don't mean nothing is fucking right that don't mean you talking sense that means you just saying oh uh if those fucking sun came up from the west and set it on the east then my plants would have grown but they didn't and the sun doesn't so what are you talking about no david calvino it is your fault the fans are at fault that's right fans are at fault i like that Ange out clueless says ronnie well that's your opinion Ange out now says tommy that's what hey y'all allowed to have your opinion i just vehemently disagree anyone who's Ange out know that i am a stark oppositional opinion holder but that's okay we can still be friends big up the macaroni Ange out is ridiculous uh but certainly he can adapt just a little in game maybe I think he's expecting the players like to me it, rem it always reminds me of the the reluctancy to uh, to change things in the match like when things are not working to me i attribute that to as a parent when your kid is struggling with a task that you have been training them at all week all week i've been training you at this task like you have a kid and they're they're becoming older you want them to be a fully developed thing that can operate on their own as their own entity they don't need daddy fucking hey whenever you take a left in the kitchen on your right is the silverware no that's not what you, you want them to know where the shit is but I mean, if you're training them all week hey, this is where the thing is you go over there you get this thing whenever you need to do this thing now, when they're struggling to find that thing and get that thing to do that thing, to me, as a parent, I'm looking at it saying, I'm going to watch you struggle. I'm not going to hold your hand through this thing that we both know you know. Because we've shown in moments where we do play this philosophy, where we can dominate the match. Six minutes, and I have the highlights pulled up right here. Six minutes, 43 seconds. Brennan Johnson on the right, crosses it into the box. There's Timo Werner. He first times it. And th th there was nobody, there was no need to volley it. You are not Zlatan. But that's Ainge out. That's Ainge needs to adapt. No, Ainge philosophy led to us in the first six minutes getting that possession, getting that chance that's my point it's like we gotta keep doing what we're doing just do it fucking better be smarter that's what Ange is waiting for them to do so i think that is the reluctancy the macaronial the macronical macaronical hello big up Faisal, member for four months me backing this team this is how i feel hashtag Ainge in big up Faisal, very strong with the four month membership chat letting us know how he feels directly big up big up um where are we at where are we at again i i'm 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 feeling it bro i'm heated i got the highlights pulled up and everything because i'll tell you the fucking time code not well not on the highlights but the time code on the 90 minutes six minutes 47 seconds timo Werner skies it to the fucking moon that's angel's fault that's angel's fault we created this great chance. And this isn't the first time that this happens. I'm saying again, this is indicative of continual problems that we've showed and exhibited throughout the entirety of this season, even when things were going great. Uh, but I agree with you, Macaroni. Ainge out is absolutely ridiculous. It was a good cross from Johnson. Werner failed to convert. Exactly. Big up Jacob. Hope you're well. Big up Mark Cook. Let me say hello to a few more people in the chat. Hello, Mark Cook. Uh, big up Zamanipapupu. Zemini Pupu, are you still finishing above Arsenal? It does not look that way. I will tell you, the point gap is getting ever more thick. They are 11 points ahead of us, which we are 10 points ahead of United, so they can hold that as well. Um, I don't know why I had to mention that, but I'll tell you right now, it does not look like we are. Um, hello, Scott M. Hello, match of the day tonight i don't know what that means big up philly philly knew it was going to be a shit show when werner missed those two chances early in the game bro bro but that's angel's fault apparently big up jacob what a great day it has been oh i'm sure for you it's been fantastic these fans angel out okay reaction hey big up ren how you doing ren blame him for signing the guy signing who who did he sign who did he sign, Jazz Fusion? Can somebody tell me why Sun was subbed off? I turned off the match after the first half. 
because um, he was ineffective. He wasn't doing anything. I mean, he was by. F he wasn't like the worst, but he wasn't really doing anything. I don't think he was really receiving the ball at all. I mean, I don't even know how many touches he had. How many touches he have? Let me share this tab. How many touches he have? Twenty-eight touches. What the fuck? Twenty-eight touches in in fifty-eight minutes. That's crazy to me. Kuz, kuz, kuz. What was that shit show today, Jacob? I don't know what to tell you, Taka. It was not great. Can't blame Ainge. It's his first season. He needs time and more of his own players. So as this is an Arsenal fan speaking a little truth here. Werner out. Yes, Werner out, y'all. Werner out, bro. I'm not about this Werner shit. I'll tell you that much. OCC, what have you been cooking for months now? Saying Werner out. <laughs> bro, we better not sign this guy because I'm so fucking tired. Like, I understand the thing of depth and like low value and low cost, low risk, etc. But this guy, if he is a person on the bench next year, say we go out and we buy the fucking world's best left winger and the world's best right winger or striker and winger, and then Son is out there. And then at some point we sub out and we put Timo Werner on the left wing. We need a goal, Timo. We know you can get in behind. We know you're going to have that pace to get there. But he gets a chance like he got in the first six fucking minutes today and then he skies it. Well, then what are we doing? Then at that point, I'd rather have fucking any Joe Schmo who can go fuck it up off the bench, not for 170000 a week. This man's making almost 200000 a week to be fucking doing that. No, thank you. <sighs> Big up Scott M says, hopefully Villa can get a result tomorrow. Come on, Villa. Hey, should I play? You know what? I think we need a little good evening to, to clear our heads. We need to summon the powers of Unai Emery. Um, did I delete the good evening? Did I really delete good evening? I think I did. But I was like, now I bang it. <laughs> and uh, I saw it fly into. Yeah, I don't see it. I must have deleted it. I, maybe because I was like, oh, we'll never play him the rest of the season. I need to re upload that. We can't have that now, can we? Um, where is it? I've got it somewhere around here. Maybe I don't. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> there it is <laughs> i found it i'll upload that let's see who else is here big up taka i remember the i remember the times verner y'all were interested in verner yeah y'all avoided that one come on now seen a few shouts but no one i'd take seriously some fans of clowns they want rewards off a of rebuild we're going through the actual rebuild How's he getting more shit than Enoch as well? Big up, Cal L. Agent, I agree 100%. Good to see you back in the chat, Cal. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I could not tell you, like, how many times do we have to do this? It's like, how many times must we go through this where it's like, it's not really the manager's fault that these players are ass cheeks. Now, is it? It's not the manager's fault that these players turn it on and off whenever they so feel like it. Now, we have been getting rid of a lot of the problems in regards to the Deadwood, uh, but a lot of them are going to be coming back this summer. And to me, uh, I just think there's not enough quality. Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner, Eve Basuma, Bentancur had moments, but I'm going to be real honest. If we don't get legitimate forwards and legitimate midfielders who can control the, the, the middle of the park, then we're going to constantly see Mickey getting overrun and, and then he's be forced to do things. Now he's slipping on the floor. Everyone's taking photos of fucking Mickey Vandeveen slipping on the floor and now it's all Mickey Vandeveen's fault. Now he should have fucking stayed up on his feet. I don't know what you're slipping and falling. And then on the third one, he was like worried about slipping and falling and he didn't even fucking, he just stood there. So <clears throat> yeah, man, it was a tough day at the office, but Mickey Vandeveen is young. Mickey Vandeveen has barely played that many matches in the Premier League, so honestly, I still believe him to be a player who's got to still continue to grow into the player he's going to be. He has shown his greatness already. It's just a matter of consistency with that greatness and even getting better upon what he's shown us. But um, yeah, man, I think a lot of these players, like, we're still fucking... How many games are we now? 32 matches played. I wonder how many we've played with the with these players. Because we had, what, 9, 10, the first, about oh, around 20, would you say, with our first 11, maybe? I don't know. 
I'm actually really worried. Yeah, I am worried that we have two weeks off before a derby. That's scary. Big up, Nick Collison. Just got back from the game. Jeez, that was painful. I can only imagine how that must have felt for you, my friend, being there live and direct. <laughs> I woke up at 5 a.m. for that. Bro, fuck Anthony Gordon. We should get both Gordon and Isak in the summer. I'm down. I'm down. I mean, I did say, I did say uh, <laughs> that those two players worried me tomorrow. And then they, that's what I said. I know there was about three hours of a show between Kuva and I on our eco-friendly heated debate clash toxicity. Um, there was a moment in there where I did talk ball and I did say that Alexander Isak is on, what, 15 goals. Anthony Gordon's got 15 GA. I think that they're going to find a lot of space in behind us, and they're going to have some joy if they take their chances, and they took their chances well, and they did find some joy. And that's what's going to happen when these teams are able to get those chances and they have quality at the end of those. And we're going to see that. If we do get European football next year, don't be surprised when we see some fucking 3-0, 4-0 losses. Because if we don't... Get that fucking midfield, bro. I, I I don't know how to put it, but we need, like, I know Ainge doesn't want the 6 and the 8 and the 10. He doesn't want the numbers associated with their positions, but something is clearly not working in the midfield. James Madison clearly, I I, I don't even know what to say. I, don't, I, I just don't know what to say. I feel like there's just no cohesion anymore, and it's like, Still, when we get into the final third, everyone wait for somebody to do something. Why are we always waiting for somebody to do something? Just go fucking do it, my man. Jacob, they're calling your boy Pedro Pronoun. Oh, my gosh. Um, wow, MB. They're really calling him Pedro. That's not nice. That's not nice. Show some respect to Pedro. But that was a fucking terrible pass, Pedro. And then he got hurt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy. Angel out shouts are mad. I'm telling you. Bonnie Tyler. Is that what? Bonnie Raitt there, Jacob. Totally Eclipse of the Sun. Totally Eclipse of the... All right, that's a different song. Totally Eclipse of the Sun. Maybe something different. I don't know. Uh, but big up to you. Big up Rob. How you doing? How you doing? Mapin, if you can't focus on the defensive aspects of the game, how will you campaign to be sustainable? You can have the prime Barcelona, Milan, or Madrid team. Angel will still concede goals with this high line. I don't know if like I don't know if I agree with that, Mapin, but big up to you. All right. Big up to you. Big up Philip Bidwell. Haven't seen you in a while because guess what? You don't show up when we winning. Y'all ain't balling with me in the gym. All right. It's if Philip, I don't like this fair weather shit. Y'all come around when things ain't looking rosy. Y'all want, oh, Jacob must not be. Oh, if he's live, he's probably talking to a bunch of fucking shit. Because guess what? Things weren't great. But now you're here. Oh, but when things are going good, oh, I'm winning. Oh, we just won. We got these points. We got points there. No Philip Bidwell then. Where are you then, Philip Bidwell? No, you're Philip Bidwell when the fucking weather's well. Philip will bid well when the when the fucking weather is well. But he won't bid well when... Wait, that didn't make sense. You know what, Philip Bidwell? I'm on to you, all right? I'm on to you. Destiny, hi, Jacob. Did you see Alex on We Are Tottenham TV? I did not. I saw I saw it on the YouTube feed. I did see it on the YouTube feed from, I think, We Are Tottenham TV. Should we watch it? How long is it? Can someone link it? Let me see if I can find it. Can someone link it? Link the link it. Let's watch it. We'll watch it together. She also did It's a Heartache, which fits today's performance. A very Hey, that's what I'm, hey I didn't mean to spit, but I did. Come on now. Do as AJ says. Smash that like. Smash that like. Not the mama. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means uh stream needs fraud insurance what are you talking about jazz you hear what well come on now what is this i back ainge i love ainge but it's becoming silly now we're setting up the same way and playing into team's hands no we're not what oh my god all right i'm gonna drop a link in the chat right now this is i'm done with this I'm done with this. We're going to watch this together first. And since I can't play it, y'all going to have to watch it with me. All right? So there's the link. And it's the fucking highlights to the fucking game. All right? Let's see here. Where are we at? I'm going to skip ahead in the chat.
Hey, big up. I just saw this. I like anyone who agrees with me. Werner finishes. It's a different game, bro. Bro. Come on now. Big up Swim Master. Bro, this is what I'm saying, man. They're crazy. This is crazy out here. Big up Jay Ashraf. Oh, yeah, I'm way behind in the chat. Hello, Faisal. Uh, for me, I don't care about a top four race. Just can't wait for summer window and age second season. In my opinion, Sun should not have played deeper, and other players need to take some responsibilities. Yes, I agree. I agree 100%. Uh, big up Brian McGuire. Uh, Patty Hartnett. Hello, Patty Hartnett. For once, I agree with Scott M. That we are never going to finish above Arsenal? Is that what y'all agreeing about? Stone Gooner says, Yo, Jacob, how was the game today? Did I miss the live stream this morning? I was looking for it. How's Chewy? Chewy's good. I did not do a watch long, and I'm glad that I didn't. Because uh, I would have been screaming at 6 in the morning, waking up my entire house. So that's that's not great. Big up, Stefan says, It sucks, bro. Let's be honest. Any team that's not in the top three has had these types of results. All of them. Liverpool only have three more wins than us this season. It's perspective. It's all about pers <coughs> perspective, my friend. I agree with that 100%. Big up. We're at 50 likes. Big up, AJ, uh, for letting me know about them 50 likes. Come on. he Keep hitting that like. How many votes do we got in the poll? We could surely, but don't call me surely. 98 votes. Man, we could be on 100 likes before this show's over. Come on now. No, this can't solely be blamed on players, says Mapin, even if you had prime Barcelona. Mar Bro, why you keep talking about prime Barcelona, Milan, or Madrid? I ain't talking about them. We're talking about Tottenham versus Newcastle. We're talking about Tottenham in the last eight months. That's what we're talking about. I ain't talking about fucking Fartalonia. I ain't talking about Milan wafers, all right? I ain't talking about Real Madrid, who's a government-owned fucking entity, all right? I'm not talking about these things. I'm talking about Tottenham Hotspur. So let's not, it's irrelevant if you had prime Barcelona, Madrid, these sweeping statements, Mapin, is fucking fraudulent. This is a fraudulent statement. This is a broad just, oh, prime Barcelona wouldn't even yada yada. You're just, you're, you're just taking your bat and you're swinging. I understand you're, you're trying to get it going. I understand, but come on now, let's use our heads. Congrats on your baby girl. She's not here yet, but thank you very much. I will, I will, pre I will put that. And I'm going to take it and put it right there in my heart. And I'll hold on to that ever so gently. Um, big up Mark Cook. Jacob, if we are honest, we are an absolute shite today discussing performance. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Spurs psych, big up. I think it was a combination of quality and consistency, lack of effort at times, and as you say, growing pains. Inconsistency, lack of effort, lack of clinicalness. We can we, The list goes on and on, my friend. Big up Boon Seng Lee. Big up. Daryl Dent says the fact all our players were in their half on Newcastle's third goal, Van Deveen Hammy is definitely not going to last long. I'm a little concerned about that hamstring, I won't lie. Jacob, I honestly think Paulino from Fulham would be a good buy. That might, I mean, he's been, he's been touted. He has been highly touted. Uh, big up, Paul, one, two, three. Can't believe people want Ainge out. That's ridiculous. I can't believe it. I, I got the tweets. I've seen them. I'm saving them. Lots of players playing their first season, says the reptile keeper. Yes, come on now. Let's keep it about perspective. Perspective, people. Perspective and patience. People can want what they want. Makes no difference. Big up, Jess Fusion. Uh, Jamie Masunda, that's a new name. Jacob, what time did you wake up for this game? Uh, 5 a.m., Jamie. I woke up at 5 a.m. Look, here's the link. Here's the link, okay? Got the highlights here. So let's, I'm going to run through them. Y'all can run through it with me. The time that I'm at in it is two minutes exactly. 201, 202. And they're showing the replay of fucking Bintancur. Nice ball over the top to Brennan Johnson. Seven minutes on the on the play clock. Timo Werner. You could have just... You could have just chested it down to somebody. There's two people right there. Instead, he went for the fucking volley. The glorious volley. And he fucked it. All right? Oh, that's Ainge's fault. That's Ainge's fault. Let's see what other highlights we got here. Uh, nine minutes, cor uh, corner for Newcastle. Bruno Grimorich, he's a pussy. All right? And then the very next opportunity they show... Counterattack from Newcastle, ball over the top. Destiny Udogi on Anthony Gordon. Destiny Udogi takes a great touch. The play clock is now about to hit 30 minutes. 29-49 is what's on the play clock now, okay? So Destiny Udogi here cuts out the counterattack long ball that they just attempted. 
So at this moment, we're all thinking, very nice, Destiny, good shit. But Anthony Gordon has another idea. He pushes over Destiny Udogi, who falls over ever so gently um, and throws his arms up. I don't like that. When you fall over and you throw your arms up, you're clearly looking for somebody to save you. The referee is not Captain save -ho, all right? I repeat, the referee is not going to be Captain save -ho. So whenever you think something's wrong by throwing your arms up like that, I really don't think that it's going to do anything positive for you. And to me, it honestly looks kind of weak. So I don't like that. So Anthony Gordon has officially bodied him off. He's laying on the floor, and now Anthony Gordon has space. Now, Van de Veen and Kuti Romero here are both crashing in on the space that they believe Anthony Gordon's going to run into. And what does that do? Back door. Bang. There it is for Alexander Isak, who then just cuts in and really puts Mickey Van de Veen on the floor, and that's quite embarrassing. The photos from this instance are not very nice. And then Alexander Isak, right foot, boom. Right past Vicario. Vicario had no chance. No chance on that goal. And then I think the second goal was about fucking 10 seconds later. They're like showing the replay and then they cut and then they score to... Uh, so they're showing the replay again of what I just told you. So really piss poor. Now, I, I don't know what we were doing in their half before this counterattack chance for them that led to Destiny getting bodied and then Van Deveen and Romero getting slipped up, bambied. Um... But I'm going to say it was probably some horseshoeing. A little bit of that, we don't know what to do, so let's work it around. Then we turn the ball over, inevitably leading to a counterattack. I understand why people are frustrated with the system when this is what's happening. I understand completely. While I don't agree that Ainge Postacoglu should be blamed for this if the players had a little bit more fucking clinicalness and creativity in the final third, this counterattack would have never happened. We'd also be 1-1 if we allowed this counterattack. Again, the whole ethos of this fucking philosophy is to do what? <laughs> score more goals than your opponent. We know we're going to concede, but we're supposed to go score more than you. I think at this point, we could have had two. One, for sure, from Timo Werner, that fucking criminal. Uh, but here we are. I know y'all can't watch this video with me, but I'm going to just keep talking through it because I just feel like these... Things that are in these extended highlights, this is not Angel's fault. Not Angel's fault Destiny won the ball and then got fucking pushed over and fell. That's not Angel's fault. It's not Angel's fault that back door gets left wide open for fucking Alexander Isik. That's not Angel's fault. It's also not Angel's fault that Alexander Isik does one cut move into the box and Mickey Van Deveen's doing a fucking yoga pose. All right? That's not Angel's fault neither. So let's skip ahead. Let's see what's going on. So they're showing the replay, and then they cut to, and it's already Gordon juking Van Deveen. So when we're watching it live, that's what happens. You come back from replay, and Van Deveen's on the floor, and Anthony Gordon's slotting it into the far post, and it's 2-0. So when they show that replay, let's look at it. Again, effectively <laughs> 10 seconds after, Blink of an eye, Spurs find themselves with their dick in their hands. So it looks like a pass back from Van de Veen, a pass back that was pretty not well weighted. Um, reaches Vicario. Okay, the, this is the one. This is the one. Vicario receives the pass, goes long. Not a good pass from Guglamo Vicario. Gets cut out there by some fucker in the black and white stripes. But then Pedro Poro. All right, this is Pedro Poro here. So the ball, the 50-50 ball that Vicario put into the air, I'm ignoring the chat for now, but I have it down here. So if I see like a member chat or a super chat or something, I'll, 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 I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll read it. But I'm going to kind of talk to myself here. And if y'all agree with me or not, you know, put it in the chat. I'll, I'll see it or comment below if you are watching this back on playback. Again, big up everybody who is here live. I know that there's a lot of people live right now. And if you're a Spurs fan, it's not great to have to rehash these things. Um, but you know what? There's no excuse. There's no excuse for me not to do this show. There's no excuse for Spurs to have that pathetic ass performance. It's no ex fucking excuse. It's uh, it's quite abysmal. But look, I'm gonna keep running through this. But hit a like on the video. Hit a subscribe if you are enjoying it. If not, then you can just continue to be here and, and then not help the channel grow. But I see 110 votes, so I'm fully confident there's at least 100 of y'all that will support the channel in a free way. Um, because that doesn't cost a dollar to do. But again, back to this chance. Vicario, 50-50 ball, boots it into the air. Some dude in the black and white heads it. 
and just plops it. And Pedro Porro tracking back and rather than just controlling the ball on the half volley, fucking boots it. And guess who he boots it to? Anthony Gordon, who's tracking back and is in front of Mickey Vandeveen. Now, I don't necessarily blame Mickey Vandeveen here because he's already been caught out of possession. Now, look, um, let me see here. This may be better for those of you. Look, um, this is where I'm at now in the video. Look, I'll show you where I'm at and then I'll switch tabs. So that way when I play it, y'all, I don't get the copyrighty. That way they don't copyright me. I just want to talk about the damn game. Come on, YouTube. They need to allow us to fucking watch game film together because I feel like a lot of this disagreements that we have could be settled with video evidence because nothing talks more than video evidence, at least for now until AI fucking takes over everything. But again, this is where I'm at. Vicari, no, excuse me. Pedro Poro has effectively... So it gets cleared here. Wait, can y'all see that? It gets cleared here. And then Pedro Poro down here, the 50-50 the ball gets headed and it falls to him and he doesn't control it. And I'll tell you what, there wasn't that much pressure on him. I'll be real. Let me see if I can find it here. Well, I don't know. Let me do this so I can play it again. <laughs> fucking copyright. So the back pass from Pedro Poirot is fucking awful. Just complete unawareness, lapse of judgment, huge mistake. That's not Angel's fault, by the way. I don't I don't think that is Angel's fault. <laughs> when the when Vicario clears the ball for a 50-50 and they win that 50-50 and then Pedro Poro, instead of controlling the ball, boots it into the box for Anthony Gordon, right into Anthony Gordon's bread basket. Motherfucker was the bread delivery man, and Pedro Poro said, here you go, sir. Boom, right into the basket. That's not Angel's fault. It's not. It's really not. And if... <laughs> Like, I, I, I don't know how anyone could say, oh, that's Ainge Postacoglu's fault. Uh, Pedro Poro doing that is a result of Ainge Postacoglu's tactics and setup. He put Pedro Poro in that position. He did put Pedro Poro in that position to do that, but Pedro Poro should have had enough fucking tactical awareness to say, oh, look, there's a guy right there. Maybe I don't kick it right there, because guess what? There's a guy right there, and where I'm not going to kick it is right there. But instead of any of those thoughts crossing his mind, he just fucking blindly boots it because of what he just thinks. I don't know. I don't know why he does that. He does that, boom, 2-0. Before you can even fucking, before you can even comprehend. All right. Ainge is overrated by this fan base. He is making mistakes. Bro, you were waffling, John Fitzpatrick, respectfully. You were fucking waffling. He's not overrated by this fan base. You coming in here showing, you coming in here saying that shows that he is not. So literally you just debunked your own theory. But I carry on with my highlights rant. So again, Anthony Gordon gets played in here. Vandeveen falls over. So while Vandeveen has fallen over now twice on two different goals, the second one I don't blame him for. But now what I think you'll see in the third goal is... An amalgamation, shall we say, an amalgamation of him having these mistakes. John Fitzpatrick, I'm not going to repeat myself. You can go back about 30 minutes into the show, and I have a response for for everyone who says, oh, 3 nil down before he made any changes. I refer you to the analogy earlier in the show, but I carry on. So they're showing the other angle here of that second goal. Vandeveen up ended just absolutely awful, but I blame Pedro Poro there. And then, yes, Vandeveen did fall over. Not good. I mean, Anthony Gordon fucking put him on skates, so that's going to be what it is. Vicario got a hand to it. Maybe you could say Vicario should have been better there. Maybe you could say that. He was playing quite frantic by playing it out of the back in that rushed manner that led to the 50-50, that led to it. And there's Cuti Romero telling everyone, calm the fuck down. But instead of calming the fuck down, 
What do we do? Turn the ball over on another Vicario chance, and it falls to a man right in between. Oh, into. Oh, we got so lucky there that Isak didn't score in the 36th minute, 37th minute. Uh, because again, another just giveaway where they, what they do, we just give it away. Long ball over the top. Someone gets it, makes a juke, has a shot, have a crack at it. That's not Ainge's fault. Like, bro, the fact that we are uncreative in the final third, I don't blame Scott for. I'll be so real. I'll be so real. So here's now 41 minutes, another chance for Tottenham Hotspur here. So Sonny has effectively dropped very deep, received the ball. Um, if, you, if you've clicked the link that's in the chat and you're watching along with me, the time code on the video is 6 minutes, 17 seconds. On the... On the 90-minute clock, it's 41-11. So Son has just dropped deep, received the ball, lays it off to, I believe, Yves Basuma here. So Basuma does what? Lays it back to Son, who then quick passes 1-2 to Madison, who takes a first-time shot right at the keeper. Not good enough. You do a good little move, create a little something, Madison doesn't really challenge the keeper at all. A very simple save from the keeper. So that's two chances now that we have effectively created where there was a at least an attempt Maybe not a shot on target, but an attempt in the final third to do something. That is what the, ses the system sets us up for, to have those chances. Now it's up to the players to take those chances and execute on those chances. Here's another chance. 47 minutes, 16. What is this? Not a chance for us. Oh, it's Alexander Isak almost scoring on us on a set piece which we know on set pieces we get absolutely taken advantage of. To me, Ryan Mason, got to go, buddy. <laughs> Ryan Mason has to go, plain and simple. Ryan Mason, you're done out here. Miles Jednak, you're done out here. Set piece, offensive, defensive, I don't give a fuck. Whoever is in charge of that, you're done. You're done out here. Start, start learning Chinese, buddy. Uh, so here's another chance, 49.57 on the clock. Time cut on the video, 6 minutes, 42 seconds. Timo Werner, I'm going to rewind it just a second. So Timo Werner, oodles of space, oodles of time, one, two, three, four, five running options in the final third. And of course, a sixth and seventh option to his right. So what does he do? He cuts it in on the right. Effectively now has one, two, three, Four pass options. Five if he's fucking Kevin De Bruyne. Five passing options in the final third. And he cuts it into a territory that I've seen Hyungman Son take the most beautiful, elegant, sexual shots from. Curl it into the far post. Always beating the keeper. I've seen it a hundred times. Now, Timo Werner puts it into a familiar area where I've seen Sonny operate a lot. Now, I'm, I'm mentioning Son for a specific reason. He gets the shot off. Hits keeper right in the fucking chest. So another shot on target that does not actually challenge the keeper. As a goalkeeper, you love these chances. You love it when they shoot it and it hits you right in the fucking chest like you have a target. And they're aiming for it and they fucking hit it. I love that as a keeper. My favorite. You make me look like a badass. Or when it, the, the other shot, which was the parried one, like to me those... Uh, those great right here. When you put it in and around here, you make me look like an all-star as a goalkeeper. So what does he do? He shoots it, hits him right in the fucking chest. Now, I have been up here for many, many weeks saying Son is our best number nine. You have to play him at the nine. But now, if the wingers are allowed to cut it in and shoot outside of the box, you got to give that to Son. Because, again, I've said often that Son is wasted out there on the left. You're asking the businessman to do the dishes at the restaurant. And to me, uh, he's a surplus to goods out there. So honestly, I'll be very real. I don't want to see Timo Werner cutting it in and having a shot. I know I say, when you get it, just fucking shoot it. That's something I've said quite often, but that doesn't apply to Timo Werner. So there's a great shot into Depravka's chest, and they're going to say, great, great job there, Depravka. Timo Werner has a great run, 
but he should really not be shooting from there. I'm glad you have confidence, my guy, but I don't know what amount of confidence you got to be taking that shot. You had Son, you had Madison, you had a lot of options here. So now they're showing another chance. And I believe it's Son gets dispossessed, dropping down into the right position in the final third. And long ball over the top. And we are caught out of here. Now, effectively, Alexander Isak has oodles of space. Vicario tracking back to get in position. Shot goes off as soon as he sets his feet, which is never good for a goalkeeper. And he beats Vicario far post. It is 3-0. And he was not offside, obviously, because the pass started. His run started in his own half when the pass was off. So, of course, it's never offside. Um, yeah, showing the fucking... Wow. So, again, dispossessed, outside of the box, in their half. One pass. One pass. Three, four times this match in 51 minutes. Four times. One pass is all it takes to get a chance in. And they made they, they converted the third one out of those five. Um, let me see the positioning there when the pass got off. So Vandeveen's with him in the center circle. Romero's further up ahead of him. Udogi's further out left, so way further away. You're thinking Vandeveen can get there. Now, Alexander Isak is not no slow pony, so he can run. And Vandeveen was effectively eh, effectively not able to get there. Just he, he wasn't able to get there, quite frankly. And honestly, I feel like in this moment... Now, again, I don't blame... All right. So the position that he's in, he's facing the goal, and the ball gets played in behind. So he sh turns himself and starts running. By this time, Isak already has about five, six yards ahead of him. Drops in in a beautiful little peach position, falls to his feet. He takes a great first two touches. And at this point, he's in the box. So the time code that I'm at right now is 7.50 in the video, 51.10 on the clock. Um, and it's this moment here where you would think Mickey Vandeveen would do what he always does and make a, one of the cleanest tackles, a goal-saving opportunity. Um, again, I'm not blaming him for this goal specifically. But in this instance, I feel like the reason he doesn't actually even attempt at the ball is because he's afraid of getting slipped on the floor again because for two of the goals, he was on the floor. So to me, I think that those two things built up into what it was in that moment for him to not be effective um, on that. And again, that is a product of our system, those chances of them getting in behind. But Mickey Vandeveen on... I mean, I feel comfortable saying at least 10 times I can remember he has had these same instances, but he stops it. He saves it, and we don't question it because there goes Mickey Vandeveen, and that's what we're doing. But it doesn't work. Mickey Vandeveen is hesitant in his action, effectively. Um, and, but, but now this is a problem on the system. Now this is a problem on what we're trying to do because Mickey Vandeveen hesitated and didn't actually put in a challenge for that and just allowed Alexander Isak to get that shot off. Now, again, I don't blame Mickey Vandeveen for being caught out like that. That's a tough play because we're he's sitting there in the center circle watching our midfield and our forwards do fuck all with the ball. And he's just watching them waiting. Maybe we're going to get a shot off. Maybe we're going to get a shot off. And then, boom, one pass. And now he's the guy who's got to be captain save a hoe. But now because his confidence is shaken, those first two goals, he is effectively face in the ground. What I like to call grazing like a cattle in the free range just num 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 eating on the grass ranging roaming the range two of those goals so that for me the third it makes sense it makes sense why he's hesitant but his hesitancy i don't blame ange postacogli for i'll be real so that's three goals that i've told you i don't blame my ange postacogli for for the players simple mistakes Every team makes simple mistakes, by the way.
Ah, uh, Vicario should have done better there. I, he just got his feet set. I I do think Vicario got to do better there. The second one, 50-50. That third one, I think you got to do better there. You got to help out your team in that instance, in my opinion. And then they're showing another chance here in the 56th minute. 57th minute. Hello, my son. That was a short nap. Did he hear me yelling? I'm sorry. No, I'm just going through the highlights and complaining. But I'll be I'll be done soon. Hi, baby. Does it smell like stinky dog in here? No. Okay. We got a stinky dog in here. I'm gonna rewind this chance. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, but it's a <laughs> it is a free kick for Newcastle. So immediately, obviously, we're gonna do something not great here. Clear header, untracked. The nearest man to him is his own teammate. So a really great take, uh, taken set piece again from an opposition. Very poorly defended set piece defensively from Tottenham. Again, a huge indictment on the coaching staff, I will say. Now, if that you want to blame on Ainge, I'll accept it. Because it should be Ainge to tell Ryan Mason, you are being poo-poo at the job. Ryan, Miles Jednak, you are being poo-poo at the job. That I can understand. I'll say I'll accept that. Ainge is at fault for allowing coaches to do shit at their fucking job, which is set-piece defending, defending set-piece. I know we haven't conceded the most goals, but there are so many chances for everybody on set-pieces defensively for us. So... I uh, I'll blame Ange for that. I I, I will concede to all y'all being like, oh, it's Ange's fault. These players are doing all this. All right, I concede that one. I it's Ange's fault for allowing Ryan Mason and Miles Jednak to have shit piss poor set piece defensive tactics. Here's another chance. Well, Brennan Johnson did really nice with the ball. Got a shot off. Um, wasted opportunity, wasted opportunity created in that. I think that was a pretty nice buildup. If I go back, it was a, I think Brennan Johnson did a nice little move. Nice ball over the top from, uh, I don't know who that is. It's quite blurry, but a nice ball over the top. Brennan Johnson has a nice first touch to pull the ball away from two defenders who are tracking back. Midfielder is now getting him back into position. So he fights the ball well off of him and then takes the shot. I really think he should have laid into the man that was on his right. He had the uh, the overlap and run. You had it right there. You could have just laid it off, but he was feeling himself. He had two nice moves. I blame him for not laying it off there, but a great little chance there. I, uh, I don't blame Ainge Postacoglu either for that, but here we are. There's another Newcastle chance. Elliot Anderson, I remember yesterday saying, who the fuck is Elliot Anderson? And he had a very good chance on us. And uh, I believe it looked like uh, Harvey Barnes maybe plopped it into him. No one. Who was that? Was that Emerson? Who did that shit defensive right there? Was that Sar or Basuma? I don't know who that was, but just just ran over there and did fuck all. I would. I don't blame Ainge for that either. But we got lucky there. That's three, four instances we got really lucky. I think. So now we're doing our horseshoe hotspur thing, and Madison says, "Fuck it, bro. I'm just gonna have a shot because we're so uncreative." I'm not mad about that actually. Have a crack. Just put it on target at least. And then Kraft, which is the name of a fucking cheese, he has a shot. Hits the far post. Half volley, wow. Cuts it across the goal. Almost finds himself some joy. I think this is the fourth goal here. Oh, no. It could have been, but oh, my goodness, Anthony Gordon. Actually, has a good defensive stop there, so I'm going to run through that one quickly. Emerson Royale, what did we expect? Got taken advantage of, but good job there, Mickey Vandeveen, cutting that out. So here's a corner from Anthony Gordon that goes up. Header. Free header. Free. Fabian Scher. He's sharing the goals, but not with us. Sharing them with himself. Fucking asshole. Gray hairs and everything, just like me. I called him Fabian Shart yesterday, and that's I guess this is what I get. Maybe it's my fault that we did this. 
I'm going to say it's my fault because I called him Fabian Chart yesterday and I made fun of everybody's name. I made fun of Anthony Gordon's face. I made fun of everybody. And this is what I get. I deserve it. Absolutely deserve it. 100% deserve it. It's fraudulence. Bro, Tommy, stop spamming. Get your fucking message across, but like, don't fucking spam it, dude. It's lame as hell. Blown up my chat with your announcement. You got an announcement? You can super chat. It's that fucking important, bro. Or just put it in the chat. Maybe I'll see it. How about that? Fucking chat moving like a bunch of weirdos today. Full time. There it is. What a shit show that was. What an absolute shit show that was. The whole team was shitty. Hey, big up Hots for Hippie. Anyone saying Angel? It was a bottle job. Big up Hots for Hippie. Good to see you, my friend. Um, oh, he texted me. He texted me. We might have a surprise appearance. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Oh, my opening monologue. I meant to segue into this, um, but I did not. So I said that I was concerned. My one word to sum up today was concerned. And I thought it was poignant that the first thing, I didn't block Tommy G. I put him in a timeout because the motherfucker was spamming paragraphs. He just copy and pasted and was spamming it. Bro, this ain't 4chan. This ain't fucking... I show speeds chat, bro. This is there's actually like chats that I do want to see and I do want to hear from y'all. I do want to have an interactive show. That is what I try to bring. But when you spam the same message over and over to me, you're crying for attention. You get a timeout. All right. When my son cries for attention, my son cries about the TV. You know, oh, this is the wrong episode. Boom. Turn off the turn off the TV. All right. There you go. That's how I feel about it. He's not blocked. He's timed out. So he, he'll be okay. He's a big boy. He'll pull up his big boy pants. He'll type his chat and then maybe I'll read it. But again, it's a maybe. So Ainge Fasacoglu says what concerned him about today's performance was, quote, I was concerned with all of it. I don't think there was one area that cost us today. I don't think there was any part of our game that reached the levels that it needs to be for us to be able to play the games on our terms. So whether it's the whether that's the physical aspect, the technical, the tactical, all of it, we just never really got into any sort of tempo or intensity that we needed to to stop a team that's got momentum right from the start. I really like that. Here, I'll make it even larger for those of y'all. Y'all want to read it. Because I actually agree with that. Werner did cost us. He absolutely did cost us. I agree with that. Come on now. On another stream, they said that the set piece manager was let go. That was let go was only responsible for the defensive portion. So who was responsible for the offensive set piece training? I've heard it's Ryan Mason on offensive set piece and it's Miles Jednak on defensive set piece. That's just what I've heard, although I don't have it confirmed. Although I don't know what it would take for it to be confirmed unless they like said it to me. Um, I did have this expressions rant that I kind of wanted to go through because um, he's upset. But you know what? We'll 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 stash that. Um, Angel Fasacoglu also goes on to say it ended up being a transition game and was a lot of a lot of that was self-inflicted by us. We weren't brave on the ball, which is what I said during the highlights. We've been really good this year at understanding that when we have the ball, we can be a threat. Certain players just shied away from that today. When you don't do that, you allow the game to be played on Newcastle's terms. That's what I'm saying. This is the part that stood out to me. We weren't brave on the ball. We were not. That's why Madison had that fucking shot that just went into nothing. I think it went over the bar. Again, you got to put it on target. You got to challenge the keeper. And speaking of challenge the keeper and challenge your perception and your reality, we have a fantastic guest. I'm going to call family member. Paul, the Hotspur Hippie. There you go, man. Hey, what's going on? Oh, I've just woken up. Just woken up. It's all gone crazy out there, isn't it? 
Captain Ranger out of my club. Oh, I can't wait. Let me. Oh, we go. We talk the monster. Yeah, come on, baby. How we doing, Paul? Good fucking morning, my G. <laughs> Man, it's Good so nice to see. Good fucking morning, Paul. It's so nice to see you, Jacob. Because I ain't sight. watching it. I ain't watching any other fucker for the next two weeks. I tell you that. You know what pissed well, me most? Well, you know you can. Yeah, go you ahead. Know, go ahead. You know what pissed me most off, man? Like you got to the stage during that match. I was doing a watch along. It was like you know, you know, you you know, you're being done over the bonnet of a car, and you just sort of, oh well, what the hell, you know? You kind of accept it that now and then you're gonna have a crap game. But the chat afterwards, man. Oh my god, what? And out. Oh, it's just pathetic. It's just bottle jobs. Bottle jobs. Yeah, let's I've change the some. manager. Change the manager again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I'll do nothing yeah. again next yeah, year. Yeah, you Brilliant. know what? Hey, yeah, I couldn't you. fix. You know what I did? When I repaired my car, I replaced the battery. <laughs> and the car, the tires started going out. So guess what I did? I replaced the battery. And I was like, hey, the car still starts. The car still runs. And then guess what? The tires blew out. I'm on the side of the road. I call AAA. I said, sir, I need a new battery. This car's not running right. Do you think that I'm going to solve this car problem by continually replacing the one thing over and over, even though there's clearly problems in other areas? I just, you know what? It's interesting. Might as well it's just interesting. push the car over a cliff and go around on roller skates. That would be a better option, wouldn't it? Or like if you could find someone with a car in front of you and then you you grab it and then you just they pull you. Yeah. What is that called? Isn't there a term for that? Towing? Drifting? No, I don't know. Oh, drafting. I don't. Whatever. Oh. Who who knows? But Paul, I, I just yeah, went man. through in depth all four goals, and now I want to I want to I, I just want to raise something little here. Little. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, little. Just tiny, teeny, tiny thing, right? And it's about conceding goals from set pieces. And I'd love to see the stats for the whole season because I think there's a bit of recency bias. Now and then you concede from a set piece. Now, Newcastle had 16 corners against us last night. I think if we had a real problem with set pieces, it, they would have scored five or six from corners, and they didn't. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm not saying it's the disaster that everyone's saying. To me, Paul, I don't think it's a disaster either. But also, I just think if you look at our final third play, that was a disaster. I would agree that that was a disaster. Our, our decision making in the final third, six minutes, 42 seconds, Paul. Brennan Johnson, uh, Bentancur wins the ball in the midfield. Thank you. Need a midfielder to fucking do that. Win the fucking ball in the midfield. He does it. Beautiful ball over the top. Brendan Johnson in space. He's got time. He's got. He's able to run on it. Nice little cross. Right foot from Brendan Johnson all the way across. And there's two people. There's 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 Timo Werner, and then there's two more of us. No one in between. Timo Werner says, "I'm feeling like Zlatan today. I think I'm Zlatan Ibrahimovic." So what does he do? <laughs> he fucking sends it to the moon. Rather than just cor corral it and first time it and challenge the keeper, rather than control it and lay it off to Son, who can clearly actually first time a fucking ball, he could have done that, but he doesn't. But that's Ainge's fault. Now on the second goal, well, actually, I don't even remember how the second goal happened, but I, I remember I just did the highlights for it, and it was Pedro Poro. That's right. Oh, Pedro yeah, they Poro. pass back. Oh, <laughs> I mean, too, they, well, that's Ainge Postecoglou's fault because because Pedro Poro didn't look to see that Anthony Gordon was right there. Because you know what? As a defender, as a football player in general, when you do this, Paul, you 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 receive the ball like he didn't even receive the ball. He had a little bit of space. He could have just controlled it, kept it there at the touchline, and had a defender fight him, or. Yeah, okay. Or what he did was he fucking first timed it and just plopped it on over to the guy who's just right in the breadbasket, Anthony Gordon. Now, I don't blame Ainge for Pedro Poro's poor decision-making and poor execution of his then poor decision that he made. Those are two problems from Pedro Poro that I don't blame Ainge Postacoglu for. Do you, you blame, blame Ainge maybe, for Pedro Poro? Well, maybe I blame Ainge for Mickey van der Ven falling over twice. 
you know, that's obviously Angie's fault. Mm. I mean, I don't know. It's just, and then, I, but you then know, on I the just, third goal, you know what else that Ainge didn't do? He didn't did tell. He, do? he he didn't he didn't tell <laughs> Van de Veen that when you get back, you should just try to get in between the man and the ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what he did was he hesitated because those first two goals, which were Ainge's fault, he fell over, and so instead of so he you could tell he was reluctant to really go in because he didn't want to get crossed up again and get fucking slid on the floor for three goals in a row. So. I, 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 Angel's fault for his mentality? Maybe. I, I don't know. Play the Wham Wham song, says Stefan. I saw um I saw a couple of um I can play it actually. You don't have to worry okay. about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. I'll yeah. do it. I can't find it. There. Oh, you go ever. It's so much better when you sing it. Wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Hey, look, perfect song for this comment. Season is over, now we ain't getting top four. There you go, that's the attitude, isn't it? <clears throat> that's the attitude. I don't give a fuck about top four, I don't. I don't give a fuck if we lose all the games the rest of the season. I don't. Because the players have got to learn how to play this way. And I saw a couple of comments, what was it? Ange, no tactics. Anyone saying Ange, no tactics, you might as well just glaze up Eric Dyer, you fucking sheep. Because that's where you're getting that from. Yeah, because they just heard Eric Dyer say, oh, we didn't do tactics in training. You're going to trust a fucking slime ball. Oh. oh, my God. Don't even get me started on Eric Dyer's comment. Boo. Boo this man. Boo this man. Um... So I have a, ser a, a series of tweets here, Paul. Because yeah, man. some people say, oh, the angel out thing ain't real. There was a moment, like I, like, I went to my table and I was having my breakfast and, you know, kissing my family, being remain reminding myself what I'm thankful being for. Being a beautiful and, uh, father and a husband. The world yeah, is doing, nice. Doing and, all and that then, shit. And then, and then I see on the joking. right of Twitter, <laughs> on, on the right-hand side where it says trending, I see the third option, hashtag Ainge out. Nah, idiots. You say, huh? Why? Wonder why that's trending. Maybe I'll just bookmark some of those tweets. So I've got some of them here. Nice. Um, this here was Tottenham Hotspur. They tweeted, "Ainge reflects on today's defeat at St James Park." Um, tough day. What did you make of it? Yeah, no, not a great cabbage day. king. Um, yeah, we just uh, you really held in there tight the till the end, huh? Yeah, credit to Newcastle. I thought they were good today, and um, you know they kind of dictated the way the game was played and. Uh, so, you know, this is typical, you know, uh, oh, yeah. media obligations after a match to give a quote from a player and the coach. That is an obligation. I've worked in sports media. This is a, a contractual obligation that they have to do. All right. But this guy, Objective Sports Takes, says oh. instead of reflecting, he should be resigning. Oh. Hashtag Ainge out. Oh, Remember, yeah. It's not typical club PR. It's media obligations. Like anyone who's no one who's ever worked in sports media, they don't understand that every every club and every sport in every league has has media obligations they have to do. There's a reason why the fucking manager gets pulled in front of a camera, win, lose, or draw, because it is a media obligation. So it's not typical club PR. All right, but anyway, he's a Levy shill. He is because he he talked to the media after we lost. He's a media shill. And he was quite upfront. I mean, he kind of said, "Yeah, we, everything was shit today. Everything was shit. You can't put your finger on it. We were just shit, shit, shit." And that's what it was. You know, there was there was like I don't think there was any one performance that stood out as being crap or any performance that stood out as being good. It was just a, a collective team performance performance of ours, and that happens from time to time. You know. Yeah. Speaking of happening from time to time, we have people like Tommy G in the chat who says, blah, 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 Paul, do you have any criticism for your fellow countryman, Ainge? I mean, I thought we blamed him really good on, on Vendivine slipping. I thought we blamed him really yeah, yeah. well on the Pedro Poro pass back, the one that went right into the breadbasket of Anthony Gordon, which then led to Vandeveen's second slip of the day. We also blamed Ainge Postacoglu for Mickey Vandeveen being hesitant on that third goal and not really getting stuck in because he was worried that he was going to get, what, sent on the floor again. So Tommy G, respectfully. Uh, I, I, you, you know what I like? Tommy I like about G, no clue for you. 
I, I like ahead, um, I, I like that attitude because it implies that I'm only an Ange Postacoglu fan because he's Australian. I love that. I love that. That makes real yeah. sense, you know. Because your first match Tottenham that you attended is... I was going to say the first Tottenham throw... match you went to was what? Uh, well, the first one was 1985. Um, but, yeah, I started supporting him in 1978. No, no, 1977 when we were in the second division. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to throw Spurs away just because of some arbitrary boundaries that <laughs> mankind dictates as a country, <laughs> you fucking moron. Oh, um, as you know, I'm just uh, gonna say this. <laughs> Got your way. Um, oh, you know what? And the one I, 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 I just saw the headline because I knew they were going to be saying, Oh, the high line, the high line wasn't to blame for us giving the ball away to Newcastle. You know, if anyone thinks that if we'd have played that line with the with the line say twenty yards back, that we would have won that game playing that shit, you're you're an idiot. It doesn't matter what tactics or formation you play. If you're if you're having a bad day and you're not playing well, you're gonna you're gonna get thumped. That's what happened. We last year we played with eleven men behind the ball, and we got thumped. For, uh, we got thumped by Newcastle. You know, we got thumped regularly last year playing all the no, men. No, when, when we did when we did that, Paul, what we did was we broke a record for how quick a team can score four goals from the opening kickoff. There you That's go. What we did, but yeah. the, but oh, we're naive and unadaptable by going out there in the first six and a half minutes and creating a clear cut opportunity to score the fucking ball. Hey, we thumped them. We Lisa. thumped them at our place. They thumped us at, at their place. Like Newcastle looked terrible when they were at White Hart Lane, and we looked terrible when we we're at St James's Park. You know. There you go. Well, what do they call that in the business, Paul? Uh, um, a tit for a tat? Tit for tat. Newcastle yeah. played well. I mean, you can't take that away from them. They played really well. They looked really good up front. You know, we didn't. Ainge they did not did. pick Werner. That is a lie as well, OCC. Bro, these, these broad sweeping statements that They're people dickheads. make with no contextual evidence is really strange to me because Ainge came out and said, when Johan Lange and his assistants presented Timo to me, I said, sure. <laughs> I said, all right, that'll do. He seems like a good guy. That's what he said. Because the club needed a warm body because Sun was gone for the Asian games. We needed a warm body who could run up and down because Brian Hill's never healthy. And fucking Solomon is MIA. So well, Tom, Tommy we G a winner. Say, Tommy G says, I never called you something or a moran. I didn't call you a moran. I called you a moron. But I'll go one up. I'll call you a <laughs> as well. Oh, <laughs> YouTube with the quick censorship <laughs> on that one. Um, <laughs> They're listening. Well... See, here you go. A very poignant way to disagree with the point that's made on show. Patty Hartnett, the ever respectable, says, Disagree, Paul. Newcastle did not play well. We allowed them, to, allowed them to play and made them look good. A very bad day at the office. I agree with that. And Ainge did I can see that. that, yeah. that <laughs> I've just woken up. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. But I think Newcastle did play well. But yeah, I mean, you, you've got to let another team play well, haven't you? So there's truth in that, I guess, Patty. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I suppose yeah. we're sp I, sp I suppose we're supposed to have an internet fight now, aren't we? But I can't. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We need to add that to the title. Um, what are we doing today? today? Yeah, <laughs> heated rant and clash. Hey. All right, so make sure you're ranting and clashing with me, Paul. Um, hang on. This is did this you? Is um, that would have been early for you. Did you? Did you get up and watch the game, Jacob? Five a.m. Yeah. What a reward, eh? AM. You know, I'm really glad that I didn't fucking get out of bed and like do the whole fucking watch along because I've been screaming at 6 a.m. <laughs> I was uh, I was like delirious by then. But yeah, it was really the chat that annoyed me. It's just, God, oh, man, what did you ex what did you expect from this season? Did you expect us to uh, finish second or third or first? You know, the, the, before the season started is because everyone was saying, oh, I don't care about this season. It's a build. It's a build. Well, there you go. This is part of the build. This is the part of the suck it up princess, you know, phase of the project. Then everyone's just bottling it. Bottle jobs. Oh, 
Shocking. Everyone's got their UEFA coaching badges. I'm sure they've all got extensive careers in football. Hey, I've got some good news for you, though. I've got some good news. My uh, my my daughter's newly promoted side, Balmain Women, got promoted and they had their first game of the season and they won 11-1 and my daughter scored four goals. So there you go. There you go. There you go. Well, I kind of like that. And speaking of there you go, got another Ange Out tweet here that I bookmarked here for we our go. pleasure. So an Italian flag, and their name is Male. Right. And their name is Male Spurs 1882. They replied to Tottenham Hotspur and said, only change that actually matters is the manager. Get him out quickly to save us from being completely embarrassed in Europe next season. Ange Ball and Kangaroo Nuno himself are some of hey. the biggest frauds I've ever seen. Hashtag Ainge out. Initial thoughts there, Paul. Well, he's uh, being jingoistic, isn't he? Which I think I think I think pe most people are. Most people ask. Ange is the only uh, is the only manager in the Premier League that get that gets found out or gets called naive when we lose a game. What other teams haven't lost games this year? I've not seen any headlines saying Eddie Howe's naive or or lost it after well, after we thumped them at White Hart Lane. So why is that? Why is Ange the only guy that gets that thrown at him? Don't know, man. Scratch my head. I mean, I I blamed him for all those player mistakes that led to goals. I blamed him. You know, again, the system sets us up in a way that that and this isn't sarcastic the the, the <laughs> system sets us up in a way just wanted to be clear uh, <laughs> that we've created all these opportunities for us now ainge is not out there it, he doesn't have a fifa controller and says now you pass it to this guy with this much weight and this type of pass now try and go pass it over the top to this guy now pass, he, he's not the guy who's really controlling everything and to me it's like, okay, well, if we can't blame him for the players' mistakes, then let's blame him for not doing anything on the touchlines, which is another Oh, he's not passionate mirage. enough. Oh, it's, he's, supposed it's, to, he's supposed to be a cheerleader. But Maybe then, but then Klopp booty. does it. Yeah, and Klopp does it, and everyone takes the piss. Arteta does it, and we all yeah. hate him and shit on him. Get in your box. I say it all the time. I like a manager to act like, you know, it's like a restaurant. Have you ever worked in, a, in the restaurant where everything's getting fucking real busy? There's a wait. You've got angry people waiting on food. There's there's a backup in the kitchen. Everything's backed up. And if your manager's going around, be like, oh, we're going to blow. There's too many people. Oh, you want to be doing gonna... that? Oh, you got to take this. Oh, you got to make sure this plate goes down. Oh, 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 you got to, oh, you, you want a fucking guy to act like a goddamn turkey on Thanksgiving Day running for his life on the touchline. That's what they want to see. Oh, show me the passion. We're going to run around and just fucking, ooh. To me, it's just weird, bro. It's, it's when you have it this way, I hate that. I want it this way. Now I got it this way. I hate it. I want it this way. You hey. get what you want. And it's just a constant fucking wah, wah. Wah, wah. Thank you. Wah, wah, Thank wah, you. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Heated clash. Violent I rant. I can't remember seeing Keith Birkinshaw running around like a twat. And we did all right under him. Oh, man. Real quick, big up Shafe becoming a sponsor tonight because I'm sure there's no ads on this because of all the F-bombs. But Yeah, I got, I, got, I got the old yellow dollar on my watch along pretty yeah. quick last night. Oh. I'm, 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 used, bro, I'm used to the yellow dollar sign for any watch along. That's why I always say yeah. thank you for helping this watch along like, I, I have some so, monetary value. I always put it in for review and it always comes back good. So I'm training YouTube because you're, you are allowed to swear. That's the thing. As long as you don't you do are, it in the first, but they said you have seconds. to do it in an elegant way, like you, it, like a music video. That's what that's the way I read the rules. Like you're allowed to curse if if it's like you can't just be like f f f c c c f f f. You know what I mean? You gotta be like, where where fuck you, where where fuck you, na 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 na. You know, it's like that. I'll start singing it next time, man. All right, I think we gotta sing it. That's what like a music video. Fuck. Fuck you. Uh, Shafay, 
I did not mean that to you, but big up for uh, sponsoring go. tonight's episode it says I've lost count of the number of times that we've been told Ainge has been found out. Surely someone gets found out once and we're still somehow winning games. This is a point that I think Paul and I both constantly go back and, and, and visit because to me, I think yeah, don't be aggressive with it. You you, you got to be casual with the fuck. You know what I mean? Oh, what was that over there? It's a little fuck. Little shit, bitch. <laughs> what is that? A little fuck shit, bitch, over there. I'm oh, just gonna get some. Oh, look in the fridge. There's a little fuck in there. That's nice. <laughs> oh, open the fridge. <laughs> What's this? A little fuck shit, bitch. On. Oh, what was that? Um, but pick up Shafay. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. This is what happens when I have such a lovely, lovely Sorry, person. Shafay. No, big up Paul, big up Shafe, but Paul honestly makes it so much better. Or else it's just me fucking wang wang into the ether. Wham, wham. Um, but I do agree. You don't get found out more than once. Like it's like you don't you discover found out, a clue. You found out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're dumb. You're, you're, it's like you're playing a game. You're like, here's a clue to the murderer. And it's like you found out the clue. You don't just all of a sudden forget the clue, and the clue is no longer there um so i just find it weird you know aston villa the second time that we played them what did unai emery do he adapted he bent over for our tactics oh. and what happened he got fucked so to <laughs> me it don't matter if we just do what we're supposed to do we can win the game that's we all you score do. that first chance it's one one when we make the mistake you score goals, you allow yourself the ability to make mistakes as humans, which we will inevitably do. Like George, inevitably gifting a United Spurs of America membership. Big up George. Um, and Dubs in the chat for becoming a sponsor tonight. Big up Lisa O. Ay, 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 caramba. Lisa, congratulations. Welcome to the family. She's in Mexico, so I tried to do a little. Ay, caramba. Like a, ay, 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 ay. Um, I, I realize now that that could fall on flat ears, but again, I, for today and every match that we've really blamed somebody and blamed, it's always to me, the player's not executing properly. Absolutely. It's not a problem in the, like the formula is the formula. It's just the players have to be those variables within the formula. And they're just that variables on the day they were shit. Should they have been better? Absolutely. So to me, again, I son having 28 touches and 60 minutes of play. They, the fact that he had to drop real deep just to receive the ball. He was turning the ball over left and right. He wasn't good. No, no one was good. No, I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like no one was good. Lone but man of the match. I, I don't know, man. Keep the man in the match. Man of the match was the final whistle. <laughs> man of the match was the final whistle, man. Um, big up, Lisa. Big up, George, for that. Um, Ainge picked Werner. No, he didn't. Again, I, I already explained that. Um, the players are shit because Ainge fails to discipline them. This is, again, I, I don't you know, know what that's he's... Why, that, that's why I banned he, that guy they, from my channel. He's an idiot. They want, he keeps getting gifted memberships. So it's like, <laughs> I don't want the people to be like, wow, this is how he treats members. Um, but oh, I often disagree with OCC, but they're always here, very enthusiastic about my streams. Every time I put a stream up three hours ahead of time, first one in there with about 12 messages. So, you know, I, early doors, I, I want to respect the person who's like, you know, oh, yeah. I've got no you, respect. I disagree. I've got no respect. Hey, that's, that's why if you, you want to find like, where you can get, <laughs> that's, that's go to the Hotspur Hippie. <laughs> you've got nearly 5,000 subs and I don't. because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Big up JL's zone says hello. Um, Big up Kuva. Big up Jacob and Paul. Hey. Did I miss the fist fight? You did. I was yelling and screaming <laughs> and a little bit sweaty and moist as well. But look, there's been over 100 people for a lot of the duration of this show. So make sure you are liking the video. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel and the Hotspur Hippie. It is in the description of this video. So no excuse for you to not go subscribe to the Hotspur Hippie where you can... Um, well, I mean, OCC's, he, OCC, OCC's blaming Ainge because he picked the team sheet. Well, what players, where, where are these other players that were available then? What? Skip. Should I have Skip in there? <laughs> or something? I mean, come on, man. I really don't understand. 
I'd be, we've I'd got be what we've got. Sorry. There's nothing we can do about it until the summer. So, you know. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I've said about Werner as well. Like, he's going to be there. He's going to be doing his thing. And eventually, you know, um, in the summer, we'll see what happens. And to me, I've said, we've said, everyone's said this whole time, we don't want him. A lot of people saying they would because of the boost gumps. But for me, boost gumps is not enough. Uh, <laughs> Jail Zone says, what was the score for the Spurs game? It's in the title, my uh, friend. I didn't watch it. Don't know, man. What game are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, what, what game? Balmain he said Scarlet. 11. He said Sun on the left and play Scarlet because Richarlison's not healthy. Uh, the score was Balmain 11, Leichhardt 1. That's what the score was. <laughs> uh, again... Uh, the chat chats are moving funny and i think for the next two weeks they are going to move funny i for one can't wait for my daughter to be born so i can just miss all of it yeah, i come back we stomp it. arsenal get three points versus arsenal and then you know what oh uh, now jacob's we, back uh, yeah 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 uh. oh well you know what can you do eh? what can you do two weeks to soak it up I'll say that two weeks to soak it all up. Are you, let me ask you this: We had two weeks to prepare for Fulham, and we got fucked. We have two weeks to prepare for Arsenal. Although the <laughs> two weeks we had for Fulham was also an international break, mind yeah. you. This is going to be a little bit different of a two weeks off because there is no international break. Motherfuckers better be showing up for work. Um, are you concerned that the two weeks off is going to be a problem for us because we've shown in the past that we can't handle the two weeks off and then going back to? Nah. No, no. There's every chance we can go and smash Arsenal. Every chance. So, you know, it's another game, isn't it? It's a different game. Uh, you know, I'll be real honest. I feel like we're going to get three points versus them. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think we we played very well against them at their place. Everyone seems to forget that, though. So everyone forgets yeah. the good games we've had. I don't know, man. I'd say we've had about... I'd say we've had five... Not uh, five bad performances. I mean, we've lost more games than that, but I still think we've been competitive. Whereas, like, that was probably the worst performance of the season last. You know, that 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 game last night. It was just nothing. <laughs> I don't know. Like Fulham felt pretty bad too, because right. again, it was just an example of we did create chances. I remember Fulham when we lost three nil. Uh, Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner both had chances in front of the fucking goal to just tap it in. That's not Angel's fault. They were unable to do it. The system got him in that position. Time added on. Big up Allen says, so when the so when we get so when we get the team right and we win, everything is great. Angel's quote, one of the best managers in the, the world. That's my quote. quote, yes. But I, I when we lose, that. it's the players and Angel's not culpable. Seems disingenuous to me. Paul, do you want to go first or shall I? Oh, you go first, man. I'm still waking up. <laughs> <laughs> all right no, I'll, I, 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 let me just let me just respond to a little bit of that because he, he i think he's using one of my quotes where i said Ange is one of the best managers in the world well when you win everywhere you've been you've got to you've got to have your hat in the ring haven't you when you take a a very under par australian side and you win the asian cup i think that says something when you look at how celtic played last year under Ange postacoglu and how they're playing this year under premier league proven brendan rogers I think you can give him a shout. Hmm. Very nice. What I'm I would being, say to I'm this... Be, I'm, being, I'm being fifth so far in your first season in the Premier League. Ain't bloody bad. Look, at, I mean, I ain't care at noon, I am, Reed. I, I think we're, we're, a better, we're a better team than, than Aston Villa. I still think we're going to finish above them. So, so far, Ange is being beaten by Klopp, Guardiola, and... Uh, Arteta in his first season. Oh, he's terrible. He hasn't been beaten by Klopp. He hasn't been beaten by. Arteta. I mean, in the table. In, in the table. No, but oh, no, okay. head to head to head. But again, right. yeah. that's what I'm saying. When we yeah, play yeah, these yeah. teams that are supposed to be these, when we look at the top three title contenders. Yep. Didn't lose to City in the Premier League. Yes, in the FA Cup off of one set piece. Yes, but in the Premier League, didn't lose to City. They're in the top three. They're challenging for a title and the uh, uh, Champions League. Arsenal in the title race, champ challenging for Champions League. They didn't beat us at their own fucking ground like City. And you know who else didn't beat us? We actually won against was Jurgen Klopp, who also is challenging for the Premier League title. So again, I find it very strange when you want to do the litmus test and like compare them side by side. 
right? And you say, oh, well, he hasn't got this right and got that. Bro, the tactics got us set up in a place to for the players to, to put that away. So, Alan, my response to your comment here is, I give the players and Ainge credit when we win the game. Give a fuck about the lineup. Give a fuck about who's in there. When we win, whether it's Brendan Kulu, who the fuck, I don't know. On the wings, who cares? If we win and the players who were uh, who who helped us win, I give all of them all the credit. Sure. So I give all the credit to them. But when the, the system is still the same and it still creates the chances for us to go and execute and us to make those decisions in the final third, an incisive run, an incisive ball, and we don't do that, that's not Ainge's fault. That's the players not doing what they're supposed to do in a given moment. Because if you think about it, again, like I said, this ain't fucking FIFA and Ainge doesn't have the controller. All he can do all week is say, when we're in this position, do this. And this is how I want you to do this. This is how I want this to run. And when we're here, this is how I want this to run. These are your responsibilities here. Track this, run there, yada, yada, yada. Now, when they do those things, they get into positions to score and they fail to do it, or they get themselves in a team position on a counterattack for us to do something with it, and they fail to score. I don't blame Ainge Postacoglu for that. I blame the players' lack of quality. I blame the players, every single player. No player's safe today. You know how much I love Son? I love Kuti. I love them all. I'll, talk, I'll, I'll defend them to the high heavens. Not defending any player today. Every player got it wrong today. But to blame... I, I, I haven't done this. Maybe he's meaning you, Paul, because that's never a quote that I, I, one of the best managers in the world, I mean, he's slowly growing on to me into that way, but that's not a quote that I think you could pull from any stream that I've been on or hosted on this no, channel. No, that's just me. That's me. That's me. And I'm only saying that because I'm Australian and Angie's Australian. No, <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times on Twitter I've been told to stick to the NFL because Ainge Postacoglu uh, is at fault for players mistakes um again it's just the, the, he he can't control the ball for them he can't don't shoot go, the ball for them don't they, the don't inefficiency they the little... in the final third they have the little <laughs> green triangle over their head <laughs> just change players age you should have switched to press, the other player you should have pressed the b button uh that's what I'm saying. You should have hit triangle instead of square for that pass. And then it would have been all right. Fucking Ainge. I I I I just I I don't I, I don't see how this is Ainge's fault. How is it Ainge's fault? Pedro Poro passed it to Anthony Gordon. How is it Ainge's fault that we Van can't track that backdoor runner and then Van, Van Deveen Deveen slips on one move twice. in the box? <laughs> I I just I don't understand the set piece, the fourth goal. I completely sure that's the only one where I can draw a correlating line to Ainge because I say defensive set pieces, set pieces in general haven't been the greatest, and we've been very vulnerable on those. So when we concede on a set piece, I can say yes, Ainge is at fault because there is a coach who sets up in the defensive set pieces who is not good enough, and it's Ainge's fault for being like like a manager's at fault for a waiter dropping a plate. Ainge is at fault for Miles or Ryan, whoever sets us up for those set pieces, being inefficient. Ainge is at fault for that. I'll give him blame for that. And I think that that's as much blame as I can give him for today. The set pieces, but they didn't even score. They had about four or five really clear-cut chances off set pieces to score, which they didn't use. So I just, again, I don't know where that falls into, into Ainge. Allen says he's been beaten by Silva, Howe, O'Neal, twice Pochettino with an awful Chelsea team. If you're pointing out the positive, you have to criticize the negatives. When he lost to Pochettino, we had nine men. We've also Ricky Romero beaten, getting sent off. We've beaten Howe Ainge as well. We, we spanked Howe as yeah, well. Yeah, we also have beaten, <laughs> beaten Howe. Yeah. Uh, we've also beaten Silva. Yeah, Gary, uh, Gary O'Neill. Yeah, respect to him. Props to him. Got us twice. We can't beat the fucking Wolves for whatever yeah. it's worth. But the first time we lost to the Wolves, you know who was at fault for, for their two goals? Eric Dyer and pierre Emil Hoybier. Two players who no longer feature in these sides. So I'm not really concerned about what O'Neill did that first time. The second time, sure. I just... Steady as shark. Big up says FIFA analogy counter. The difficulty is sometimes vastly different per match and the opponent responds differently. Yeah, there you go. Uh, big up Vader. 
One of the only sensible rivals talking about Spurs today, I heard on YouTube. So Where's I'm here Vader for the reasonable from? talk. <clears throat> what, what's uh, Vader's Vader? from Canada. He's from Canada. He Vader Games TV. He supports Manchester City. Radio. And he says, I'm here for the reasonable talk. Can't believe what it's come to. Some Spurs fans have been quick to blame Ainge. This is an outside source. Most outside sources are all saying, I wouldn't blame Ainge just yet. I would allow him time to continue to implement his philosophy, get players on the same page with him and more players who are capable to play these ways. Because as we've seen, there's been a clear breakdown between the midfield and the final third, which has led to our back line being violently exposed, I should say. So I, I just... I just, I just don't know what. To ah, it's say. easy, no, you, no. You drop the, you drop the back line back ten yards, and we would have won that game. It's obvious, isn't it? That's Angie's fault. I just. Aaron J says, um, "Tommy G, bro, it's time for you to go to bed. You're just continually disrespecting my guest. Go fuck yourself." Aaron G says, "But he didn't change anything when he was getting battered versus Fulham or Brighton." Bro, put user in timeout. Is you know what I'll do on the YouTube end. Um, what would you say to this that Ainge doesn't do the substitutions quick enough? I did this earlier in the show. You probably weren't watching yet, but but my point was this, Paul, and you're a parent, so maybe you can relate, or maybe you can tell me I'm full of shit here. But when I'm helping <laughs> my child, who I've equated to be a baby T Rex, a baby little dinosaur, a little tiny T Rex, which Aww. one day can grow to be a very dangerous fucking beast. But right now, a baby dinosaur can only take down what a baby dinosaur can. Now, we've taken care of a few farm animals, a couple rabbits, a couple seagulls, a couple fucking chickens. We've done all that as a baby T-Rex. But when we go against a well-managed side, a side that has had Champions League uh, financial back, I ain't buying this injuries bullshit. Anthony Gordon was their marquee signing in the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harvey, Eli Harvey Barnes, excuse me, was another marquee signing that they had in the summer. Both healthy. Alexander Isak, healthy. So I ain't hearing none of this. They ain't fucking hurt. All right? Just because I don't know who the fuck a lot of them are doesn't mean that they ain't capable players. Like, they are in a, a side that, yes, they got bounced out the Champions League, but they were in a very difficult group. Eddie Howe's come under a lot of duress because of him. But guess what? He climbed, like, five spots in the table by winning today, which is what a manager's supposed to do when you're under pressure. So Eddie Howe doing his job is not somehow an indictment as well of Ainge. But I, I, I said I'm, get, I'm going away from the point. to But to address Aaron Jay here... Um, I said this earlier that when I'm teaching my son as a young man, young child, a task, and we've worked on it all fucking week, and on the weekend, I'm going to say, hey, hands off, let's see if he can do it. And he starts struggling, and he's struggling, and things aren't doing well. He's doing not any of the things that we've talked about. So I get him, and, and then it's halftime, and I say, all right, we're going to take a break, son. You're really not getting this. You're really not picking this part up. We've trained on this all week. Now go out there and do what the fuck I've taught you all fucking week. And I do that at halftime. Send him back out there. He goes out there, continues to struggle. Things are getting worse now. There's more goals on our fucking head top. To me, a, a good parent would allow the young budding child, young human, to make mistakes and of course. learn from them to Fuck struggle and try to overcome as a i'm going to sit here and i'm going to watch you struggle with that i could help you i could change it for you to make it easier on you but this is a lesson for you to learn yeah but, but but that's my opinion i think i would let my son struggle in that moment for the greater good I would That's see right. the big picture and the development of this little human. And I would say, I want to see him be able to handle this shit on his own without daddy making it easy. Let me turn the game difficulty setting to fucking simple for you. No, life ain't easy. Life ain't that. It's a fucking hard place to grow and learn and let, let them go out there and struggle, make a fool of themselves and then snip them off and try and change things. So to me, it's not an indictment on him as a manager, the reluctancy to change things up in regards to substitutions. That's just my humble opinion. But Paul, what is yours in this regard? Yeah, it's like, you know, when you start playing something like Skyrim and you start out and you, oh, you've killed a rabbit, you've made yourself some fur and underpants and you think, right, I'm going to go and have a go at the final boss now. You know, you might get lucky, but you probably won't. So it's just, you know, we just need more experience, more time, you know. And, um, you know, people should have a look maybe at uh, Yokohama's first season under Ange where they were horrible, terrible, terrible. 
couldn't get it together at all. And then uh, they ran away with the league the next year. So, you know. I think that's what this yeah. is about. It's about not having... You, I mean, you saw Ange like he's he's deliberately taking pressure off the players because he's giving them, like you say, he's giving them the freedom to go out there, have a go, and p potentially fuck it up without giving them the big stick all the time, you know? But it'll be different next year. Different next year. <clears throat> but at the moment, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah. All right, that's what I'm saying. I... Like... I get the frustration. I get when you lose 4 0, you want to fucking burn something. Somebody's got to pay the price for what we witnessed. But I'll be so real. It's not Ainge that needs to pay the price. It's these fucking players need to play better. It's I mean, this, very this simple. The, this is, you know, this is this 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 is what this is what a lot of fans have done with, with you know, towards the end of Pochettino, Mourinho, Conte, you know. And and I can understand some of that when that when you're not when your aspiration is to play a style of football that's ass in the first place. You know when your when your aspirations are to are to win one nil at home and draw nil nil away and see if you can get something out of it. I, I get why that's frustrating. But our aspiration at the moment is to play great football, and that don't come e that doesn't come easy. It really doesn't. You know, you know when you're playing creative attacking football, sometimes it's just not there. That, that's it's the same in any creative walk of life you know because i think football will like artists you know and sometimes for whatever reason it just doesn't happen doesn't happen but that doesn't mean that it's all gone and it's it's all crap and you've got to change everything and it's like you know you know if if owners were as reactive as fans jurgen klopp would have been sacked in his first year i think arteta would have been sacked in his first Pep. if not his second year Pep would have gone he took yeah, over. He didn't, he didn't win the league. He took. He took no. over. I think Southampton finished above him. So, as I'm saying, like I just think it's this, you know, <clears throat> this fast food mentality. I just got served shitty it's McDonald's. So, it's, Fuck it, you! It's like it's so in, it's so entitled. You know, a little bit below surface here. Where's my trophy? It's all that, isn't it? <laughs> oh, what a good time to play this! I think. Yeah, here's, here's another. Is it another example for you? So. So Keith Birkinshaw takes over what seventy five oh, something sorry. like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Keith Birkinshaw takes over. Very rudely interrupted you there. Sorry. All right, man. It's your show. I'm just a pleb in your esteemed palace. Of you know what? Goodness. I'm actually responsible for your opinions. So if you fumble yeah, a take, yeah, yeah. that's my fault. All right, that's Did okay. You know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on you. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, thank God the internet wasn't around when Keith Birkinshaw was manager because he took over. We were almost instantly relegated. We come back up to the first division. I think one of our first games, we get thumped like 6-0 by Liverpool. Uh, but we it took three years, three years for, for him to, after that, to for us to win, start winning FA Cups and European trophies. So, you know, if, if you had Twitter and, and, and some of these characters in here, it would have been Birkinshaw out. Birkinshaw out. He doesn't have a plan B because he didn't have a plan B. He was he was an attacking manager. You know, it's yeah. crazy, man. Crazy. Well, speaking of crazy, got a couple more Ainge out tweets I saved up. For oh, us. lovely. These are fun. I'm enjoying these. Tottenham a, fan. A Tottenham says, fan. Tottenham fan says, "Glad to officially say this, but I'm joining the Ainge out crew. Can't crew. defend." He's joining the crew. He's joined up with the, what is it, in West Side Story? De -de -de the, 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 the Sharks and the Jets. The Sharks and the Jets, With yeah. the Sharks. Ah. With ah. the Sharks and the, da -da -da, and the leather and the ah. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what he gangs says, do when they fight, glad to officially say <laughs> this, but I'm glad to join out the Ainge Out crew. Can't defend, can't attack, no plan B, spineless player leadership. All talk, <laughs> no action. Hashtag Ainge Out. Hashtag Levy Out. Hashtag Enoch Out. What do you think about that one, Tottenham? Or, and that's me. jazz. And that's jazz. <laughs> oh, wait, this is serious. You're not allowed to laugh. If you laugh, Paul, you're lowering the standards of our club. Oh, yeah, it's because of... Oh, is it our fault as well? Because I'm like... Yeah. Because you're actually enthusiastic going into this match, so fuck you, Paul. Uh, you were supposed to be pessimistic and gently surprised if you were wrong. Um, there you are. 
Tottenham fan. Tottenham fan. <laughs> four seven six five. <laughs> Tottenham fan says six seven six five four fifty two. So, random um, random boner camp. <laughs> uh big up jess big up foxy big up everybody in the chat there's still over 100 of y'all hanging out um sharing your opinions big up every single one of you i always i'm always humming the wham wham song especially when i'm watching up it's very that's very nice very nice david calvino well we could do that because i it's in my head all the time um bader here big up bader says i'm sorry but ball is boring big up bader um i would say when our players are Doing Ange Ball very <laughs> shitty, it is boring. I agree with you. I woke up at 5 a.m. to watch that shit. I was bored out of my mind of with us. And I, we got the ball. We got the ball. Here's a pass. There's a pass. Here's a pass. Another pass. Where's a pass? There's a pass. And then what do we do? Pass it, pass it, pass it. Make a mistake. One pass. We're, we're opened up like a fucking pistachio. And it's just a matter <laughs> of, you know, if you caught the little seedling in the middle. And, and four times they did. Well, three times out of the four they did. Um... But big up Bader, big up to you, my friend. You're allowed to, again, I always say this, you're allowed to have whatever opinion you want. You can disagree with me all you want, but like, if you're like that one dude, Tommy G, just being a clown in the chat, like disagree, tell me why you disagree. And then we talk about it and then we say, hey ho, that's how it go. I don't know what else we should say, but. Oh, and that, um, that, that game, the, the kickoff here was actually a civilized time, is it 9.30 p.m.? But I was struggling to stay awake. I was struggling to stay awake in the second half. Yet when I get up at two o'clock in the morning and we, you know, we thump a team by a couple of goals, I, I can, I, I can't get, I can't get any sleep that night. So it was, it was terrible last night. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. With Tottenham, we suffered. All right. So why was, why must we as fans continue to try and make each other suffer more? That's it. You know, Bob Marley said this very great. He said, "There's so much trouble in the world." All you got to do is live a little, take a little, live a little one more time. I love Bob Marley for that. Um, so I think, you know, that's, take a page out of It's beautiful, that. Jacob. It's beautiful. You've got the voice of an angel. Look at this. Love this. <laughs> Speaking of spreading the love, Jason Noss, who apparently has none in his life, says, Jacob, our trophyless club deserves fans like you and Hippie. It's not trophyless, ma'am. But it's anyway, not sorry. <laughs> and let, I would say if you don't have a smartphone and you're under the age of 15 years old, I could see why you would believe this. But in the age of technology, you would think that a man named Jason Noss would have enough tactical awareness to say, let me see if this statement is true before I just throw it out there and try and throw Jacob and Paul under the bus. Because how dare you have a smile on your face whilst you have 4 nil loss? He says... Our trophyless club, which is an ineffectual statement, deserves fans like you and Hippie. Got bare naked at Newcastle. That's factually incorrect. Everyone was clothed and pumped into the ground. And we have both of you in full party mode. Jason, again, I am a happy individual with a lot of life blessings. I'm sorry if your life doesn't have enough blessings to where your tomorrow won't be good because Tottenham weren't good. Yeah. I, for, uh, I fortunately... That's a great, that's a great cue. I fortunately have oh. so many blessings that I wake up to. I go to sleep, I have blessings. I wake up the next day, there's more blessings. So I thank the Lord, I thank the world every single day. I get to wake up with my immense blessings. And when Tottenham does their very, very best to try and bring me down, I can critically say, this is what went wrong, this is what went wrong, and this is where my blame went. But to say full party mode, I don't know what party you've ever been to, and I would be pretty <laughs> reluctant to go to a party with a party that uh, of your description because ours is, you know, having a chat, enjoying each other's company while saying what we thought went wrong today and for Paul you, yesterday. You know, if we don't get a result against Arsenal, it's going to be our fault, Jacob, for for smiling today oh, because uh, we haven't got it, we haven't got the killer we haven't got the killer winning mentality. That's it. Yeah, uh, see, because you <laughs> smiled, Paul, and you oh, laughed. Sorry. I told you, you're lowering sorry. the standards of this club. I am. Because how dare you smile and laugh and joke, which is honestly, in life, when bad things happen to me, I always used humor as a way to, to get of around course. it and, and to, you know, feel better about myself. Because you know what? I could fucking die at any fucking second. Lightning, heart 
attack, a brain aneurysm, all type of things could kill you in a fucking instant. So you rather than up. being a mopey, soppy fuck like Jason Noss wants me to be, oh, you fucking, Jason Noss. oh, here he is. We're getting spurs well, again, okay. Jacob. It's well, not okay. a laughing matter. Well, okay. well, it's well, not okay. a laughing matter. How I think it's. <laughs> Well, then don't watch my watch-alongs, Jason, because I was kind of laughing in the second half because we were so bad. So, you know, because, hey, I was trying to be entertaining as well and have a bit of a giggle, you know. Okay, I know we're getting spanked. I know we're playing terrible. But like Jacob says, what am I going to do? Get myself into a downward funk, you know, bollocks to that. So I'm you know, shining here, man. It's, also it's a beautiful day out here today, you know. I'm That's not what drive I'm saying, bro. Going, it is such a beautiful <laughs> day. Oh, wow. Chewie's back. Ch- Chewie's back on the show, Paul. Oh, All right, Chewie's returned. Yay! He's bathed. He has a new bed. There's some more blessings, but way fucking way because we suck today, and that's really what it was. Our eleven players on the pitch fucking sucked. But I'm not gonna cry about it. The milk is spilt. Damn it! Now we clean it up and we pour another glass because I want some fucking tit juice. <laughs> All right. Dear it's very idea. simple. Like during the 90 minutes, I got I, I get very fucking mad. You can see it when we lose on I'm wa- doing a watch long. I get very oh, yeah, fucking mad. My- so it's not because I'm like not affected by the result, but again, in life that th- there's this there's a great there's a great poem stanza paragraph written by a guy. Uh it's called Attitude. And basically it goes on to say life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. So again, I'm not going to fucking cry all day in chats. Wah, wah, we didn't do this. Wah, wah. And I, oh. and that's the, but but that's it's not the, Angel's fault. Again, for the players doing poor, sucking and I, ass. Like That's and I, not I, the... Ah, oh, it's so frustrating. And, I, and, I, and that's, the, that's the time to feel the emotion. Like, you know, if you watch, what was it, fan reactions football, you can see how I reacted in particularly to the third and fourth goal. I wasn't happy, but that was then and this is now, you know. I'm not going to walk around carrying that feeling of conceding those third and fourth goals for the next two weeks. I just can't do it. You know what you could do, though, is you could listen to a song to help with all the pain. <laughs> if you're feeling down about today, oh look at these look at these Spurs fans celebrating a loss. Look at them, they're so happy. That's why we don't win anything. That's why we we're trophy. full on Let's party mode, mode, Paul. Yeah. We are full on party mode. Come on now. Woo. Get out the fucking tit tassels. Get out the titty tassels, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Swirl them titties! Come on, full on party! Ah. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. And you know what? That's a beautiful note. I think that's a that's a gentle, natural closer to the show. Paul, are you going live at all today? Are you about to go live? No, I'm go- I, I just uh, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm working today, so uh, uh, okay. no, not this morning. I might Sorry. do something this evening. Give people a chance to uh, you know have a have a couple of sleeps before they they uh they come and see me being happy for no reason but you are gonna be live later today possibly yeah yeah we'll see how we go all right make sure you are subscribed to the hotspur hippie i'm just double checking that it is in the description of this video and it is it is um but paul my last question for you today tits out and all Big up Scott Nelson. Oh, I just remembered real quick before I ask you that final question, Paul. Scott Nelson uh, came in here yesterday, and I had literally just had. Um, hang on, let me take care of that. Um, I just had a telemarketer call, and his name was Scott. And so I was like, <laughs> uh, he was like, "Oh, do you want extended coverage warranty on your 2018 Mazda?" I was like, "I don't have a 2018 Mazda." And he was like, well, do you want to get extended warranty on your car? And I was like, no. (laughs) Well, why not? And I said, because you're disrupting what I'm doing right now. You're this, that, and the other. He just hung up. And I was like, fuck you, Scott. Fuck you. And then Scott Nelson, I guess, like, 
clicks into the video. Hey, let's see, Jake. Yeah, I think oh, he's he back. The Arsenal. <laughs> I think I think he's an Arsenal fan. And he's like, oh, let me see, let me see uh, what Jacob's saying. He tunes in. The first thing he hears, fuck you, Scott, you piece of shit. Ah, oh, cut you. you know, like I'm going off on this telemarketer. So, uh, <laughs> apologies, Scott Nelson, for that. Um, so there you go. It says, Jason, you are a fool because Jacob is celebrating improvement on last season six to now four nil defeat. Again, y'all can view this two hour long show however you want. I don't give a fuck. I really don't. I really don't because I know how I feel about it. Y'all could say how you think I feel about it. Uh, but I'll tell you what. Um, that fourth place is going to look really good from the you back. Must be, <laughs> you must have had a great view of that. Wow, unbelievable from the back. Yeah. Unbelievable from the back. But Scott, or Scott, uh, Paul, you got any final thoughts for me before we say goodnight? Well, you know, I support, and I have supported Tottenham for, for over 40 years because generally it makes me happy. It distracts me away from things. You know, when you're watching a game of football, nothing else matters. And uh, most of the time, I find some reason to uh, to either laugh at it or laugh with it. And I think if it's just making you angry all the time, maybe you should be looking at a different pastime, something that makes you, you know, smile. Yeah, yeah. God forbid you do that for two weeks. You better not fucking smile. No, no, no. Fucking... no. That's my final thought. For these two weeks, I want everyone who hears this to be fucking miserable. I you want know, you to my... every single day wake up and be like, oh, we got packed at Newcastle. I can't wait to go online and spread fucking nonsense. That's what, what, what I want everyone to feel for two weeks. Whenever whenever my daughter rings me today and we talk about the four goals, she wants to tell me about the four goals she scored on the weekend, I'll just say, fuck you, we lost. We lost. What the <laughs> fuck do I care about you? <laughs> uh that's fantastic what a beautiful way to end the show but obviously i'm being very sarcastic i hope everyone who does hear this has nothing but love joy and merriment in their life obviously not great when tottenham lose four nil but what i'm not gonna do is put on a show to try and make you feel more miserable than tottenham that's already it. made you feel like that's what tottenham it comes are gonna to, make you it? feel a certain way i'm not here to be like oh you feel shitty let's make you feel worse because everyone you know negativity loves fucking company there's a reason when it comes to magnets there's a positive and a negative side and they both have different attractions and restriction uh, restrictions fucking you know you get two magnets you put two negatives and two positive sides they like don't magnet but my point is i'm digressing but um obviously it's not fucking good that we lost four nil to newcastle it's not never never ever but what it is, is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say what I think. I'm going to get mad at who I think needs to be getting mad at. And I'm going to have some fun while I do it. <laughs> because you know what? I'm too damn blessed to be too damn stressed. So Jason Doss and all you other sad sack fucking little bag of potatoes. Little sad sack of potatoes. Just who dragged my bag of potatoes? I'll tell you this. I'm going to watch Somebody, YouTube to there, be angry. I want to There's be angry for two that, weeks, man. Listen to some music or something. Live performances <laughs> always make me feel good. After a loss, I like to put on some Mark Rebier. He has a great series called We Outside. They're about an hour and a half, two hours long. About as long as you'd spend on a Spurs stream. If you want to go be miserable on a Spurs stream, go be miserable on a Spurs stream. But I would say if you want something to change it up, Google or just YouTube Mark Rebier and go to one of his live performances. We outside that's a stream and he makes music improvisationally and it's fantastic. Puts me in a great mood. But you know what? If you don't have that, find your nearest family or friend and give them a hug because I'm sure they love you and they don't want you to be miserable. So that's my actual final thought. Or, or if you're on um, your own, just just go and knock one out. You'll feel better. Post nut clarity hits like crack cocaine. <laughs> so go ahead and get it done. But as always, spread love, not hate. Be weird, but be the good kind of weird. And as always, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you haven't done it in the two hours and ten minutes, you're not going to do it anyway. So I ain't going to remind you. But keep liking, keep subscribing. Get over to the Hotspur Hippie. He's going to be live in just a few more hours. So go on over there at some point. I'm redirecting you to Casually FC with Marshall. Tell him um, Potch in. I think he's Potch out. So make or say Agent Potch in. That's what we'll do. Say Agent Potch in. As always, folks, stay blessed, stay fresh up the lads, and come on, you Spurs.
Jacob.